He says you are live. We're live. Uh, I just have a big announcement for my channel before we begin. Um, and that is I'm changing my channel name to Meta. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's why I wanted to do that stupid joke. You okay. know, at, at Atun Shea Films, our entire goal is to connect with people. It's, it's all about that. It's all about people connecting. <laughs> There's so many great memes already. Oh, like, shit. I, or, crap, I haven't seen them. Um, but uh, <laughs> already, already. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Matt said, please, like, keep a lid on it. You're a spaz. Don't, don't be swearing. Don't be being offensive, uh, which is totally legit. Uh, anyway, you're yes. fine. Um, Meta, yeah, so what did you make? Oh, I don't know. We let here. Do, do your thing, Matt. I'm sorry. <laughs> off to a off to a smooth start tonight here. Um, no, yeah. So this is, I guess, episode two. I might turn this into a. I'm still thinking about turning it into a podcast, but basically, um, just I am asking ten questions to. Um, do we don't want them to know your like real name? Do we just your? Uh, I mean, it's, it's an open secret. Uh, uh, I mean, you okay. just call me Atun Shay, but it's not like a huge secret or anything. Okay, so we'll, I'll keep calling you Atun Shay, but I know your real name. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they yeah, do too. I don't know, yeah, but it's, yeah. <laughs> um, and he's going to ask me 10 questions as well. We did this uh, a couple weeks ago with JJ McCullough. And uh, yeah, we, we've written these out the old-fashioned way. And we don't know each other's questions. That's kind of part of the fun. Um, but they're also open-ended questions. So they're not just like yes or no questions. And it's meant to like um, get to know each other better, but also like have an interesting conversation. And I think a lot of the conversations, just because of who we are, end up being like, uh, they just turn into great, you know, historical conversations or like, conversations about history or social studies in general, I think. Uh, and so it fits the nature of this channel. So yeah, why not? Um, so yeah, you, if you want to give the uh, the quick bio or and then like, what's your channel uh, all about where they can find you? Sure. Yeah. So uh, my channel is Atun Shea Films, uh, which I know is a terrible channel name and is hard to pronounce <laughs> and to spell. Uh, but you know, search Check me Lincolnites uh, and I will pop up. So uh, yeah, I, I, I do an educational, uh, a rather demented uh, educational YouTube channel that mostly focuses on American history and just kind of whatever happens to be of interest. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, it's fun. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, if you are a viewer, you know, welcome. Great to, to be chatting with you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to uh, be talking to Mr. Beat tonight. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, no, we we kind of followed each other's channels before. I think we. Uh, oh, we I've met. been watching. Yeah, I've been. I told I told uh, uh, Mr. Beat this. Uh, I think the first time we ever talked. But um, yeah, I've been watching Mr. Beat for like eight years. I mean, yeah, since. Whoa. Uh, I mean, yeah, just a very long time. Like, um, uh, yeah, I think you started popping up on my feed like 2013 or something like that. Wow. In early I days. You were a small channel. That's crazy. And I found out about you through um, our, our mutual friend, uh, you know, a cynical historian. I, I guess I won't tell his real, real name either, I guess, still, even though everybody knows it's Joe. Yeah. Um, we, him and I, we've known each other probably since 2013. And that's kind of funny that we all find each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys were kind of the only uh, people doing history YouTube, you know, uh, back then. I mean, yeah. 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 I well, and it's so weird because it's turned into a genre, but like it's still small. Like uh, I call I call ourselves history YouTubers, but I'm more like, I mean, broadly social sciences, I guess. Mm -hmm. But because I mean, I'll just have an economics video randomly. But you seem more straightforward history, and although yeah. you're, you're like unique, I think uh, spin is like you kind of have this film background that yeah. is makes it more cinematic and uh frankly more entertaining than most history videos like that's why i'm mostly drawn to your videos because i'm mostly there just like to be entertained and then yeah i, just, like, I think probably most people are yeah. yeah yeah i think a lot of people that come to my channel they like they want to learn they're like mr beat 
if you're they're disappointed if they don't learn something from my video like they literally comment section like this was a waste of my time when i'm telling dad jokes about my pets you know like anyway i um, one, love the dad jokes keep them coming <laughs> well glad somebody does yeah so uh Again, we don't know each other's questions. Um, we, we're already getting super chats, though. I want to, uh, and if you do have a super chat, I'll try to catch them as we go. But I, I will tell you that we're kind of focused on our questions. And then at the end, I'm going to leave some time, hopefully, for those. But already, though, I, oh, we, well, we've got uh, hopefully a future guest on this new show, uh, Emperor Tiger Star. So, uh, he, oh, Atunche wants. He, uh, Emperor Tiger Star wants to know your favorite rock metal punk bands. That's a great question, Tiger Star. Uh, speaking of somebody who's been in the game for so long, uh, yeah, he's the, also been in the game a long time. The Logan Roy of of maps and YouTube. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, first first thing though, uh, Mr. Beats, uh, uh, the how did you how did you just because I'm trying to learn StreamYard, everybody, just real quick. Do you just does it pop up? Do you click on the the super chat and then it pops up? Yeah. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll figure it out. I'm doing a live stream on Halloween night, everybody, and I'm gonna be check it out. Here. It's gonna be awesome uh, with uh, Dr. Justin Sledge of Esoterica, an expert in Western occultism and early modern witchcraft, and he and I are gonna be watching The Witch and doing a commentary. But anyway, ah. um, so Emperor Tiger Star, uh, you know I am not. Um, I'm flattered that you think that I am a rock metal punk guy, um, but my musical taste is uh, really weird. I pretty much, I like metal. Um, I particularly like Viking metal. Uh, Amona Marth was a big part of my high school experience, but uh, I, I listen to like instrumental, like soundtrack and folk pretty much like, um, uh, and, and like classical, uh, and a lot of it is sort of has to do with kind of whatever, um, I'm just not, not really that into music, unfortunately. Like, I wish I was, I think I can kind of hold a tune, but, um, and I think I've got a good sort of appreciation for music, but a lot of the music that I am listening to in any given time, I feel like it has a lot to do with sort of my particular interest at the time, you know, it's sort of a supplement to that, I guess. So if I'm really into, you know, 17th century New England, I'll listen to a bunch of folk songs uh, from, you know, uh, tavern songs about, you know, tobacco is an Indian weed. You know, it's like that, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, and if I'm, you know, researching uh, the, the the court of Louis the uh, the 14th, I'm listening to a lot of Jean-Baptiste Lully. You know, it's, it's just kind of uh, Civil War, of course. I listen to uh, the many wonderful, amazing songs of the Civil War era and my own very own composer, Dylan DeRosa's wonderful take on all of those tunes, the 1861 Overture, which uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with if you're watching and if you're familiar with my channel. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty much, yeah, I'm not a huge music guy, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I were, I wish I could be like, oh yeah, you know, this punk band, this, oh yeah, I know exactly where I was when I first heard Nirvana, but that's just not, I don't know, It's that's just not me. Yeah, JG and I had the same um, like question, similar, and I actually asked him, and like he, he said similar things to you. Like yeah, it's kind of yeah. funny. I know, but I know you are a huge. I mean, you know. Yeah. You are. You. You're. You're. I. Yeah. Well, I have a question about that, but well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you heard of the unbiased history of Rome series on YouTube? I have not heard of that. No. We'll have to check that out, viewer. Thanks for the super chats, by the way, everyone. And it looks like. I have um, one more. Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> oh, uh, well. How did that get there? <laughs> as from earlier, this is the one I meant I to do. Know. Okay. <laughs> Abby, thank you. And um, Checkmate Lincoln Nights. I think that's what you're most well known for. So I think that will be my yeah. first question for you. I'll start things okay. off. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Wh what number was that here? Um, Wait, maybe that will, oh, 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 no, I, I mixed things up here. I want to do a right order. Uh, okay, so, yeah, so I guess this is a related question to that. Um, okay. You only have like, you only have like five Checkmate Lincolnite videos, don't you? Or do you have more than that? I have seven. I, oh, seven. Okay, maybe yeah. I've only watched five of them. Um, dang, Okay. Yeah, they seem to be your biggest videos, though. Um, 
so my question for you is you kind of like you have certain topics that come up uh and and uh, eras i guess on your channel mm -hmm. but what's your favorite historical period to study but that you've never made videos about hmm. that's a good question i mean i've kind of made I've kind of made tangential videos about this, but probably ancient history. Um, yeah. I'm a you know big fan of our mutual friend, uh, Dr. David Miano. Um, uh, mm. Stefan, of course, we were talking about a little Both earlier before we went live. Um, and, uh, and, and that, I feel like, is a great period of history where I feel like I don't, I know enough about it to be kind of literate and kind of know, you know, somebody can tell me who, you know, Ramses II is and I know who that is. You know, it, it's, it's, I know it's the basic kind of facts of it, but I don't know it so in depth that I have like biases, you know, about it. And, and I have like yeah. certain ideas about ways that it should be taught, you know? Um, so it's, it's much more re relaxing almost to, uh, to, I can, I can recreationally learn about ancient history, right? I can't really learn about American history without thinking about work anymore uh, um which is you know that's that's sort of the reality it's kind of like uh when you um you know at, at film school it's like what they told us it's like would you like to you know do you like movies yes would you like to never enjoy movies ever again <laughs> because that's kind of the thing once you see sort of how the bread is buttered yeah uh, then you know you kind of lose your passion for it right Oh, well, it happens. Uh, I, I know that happened with me with music a little bit. Um, we're getting great super chats here. Um, that's Grant, uh, who I, I had the, uh, I was lucky to meet him when I was in D.C. So when was the last time you've been to D.C. or have you ever been to Washington, D.C.? Yeah, um, actually, last time I was there was uh, uh, back in uh, January. Um, I was taking part in a- January 6th? Yeah. Yes. Actually, I was taking part in a demonstration. Um, and <laughs> get out of town. Get out of DC. That's not winning. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, uh, I think I was there. I was there for a wedding uh, before COVID. Um, and uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Richard Nixon's uh, daughter when she married uh, Dwight Eisenhower's grandson. Correct. Yes, so, that's that's right. but American history joke. Sorry, uh, no. My my girlfriend's family is is kind of has roots in the D.C. area, so oh, uh, it's a sort of Northern Virginia for a, for a wedding. Um, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, it's there for like a weekend. It was cool. Um, going to Northern Virginia is like going to the future. People from the like people that live in Northern no, seriously, all that lobbyist. No, no, I, that, it is. I yeah, and I don't like it. Oh, you uh, agree? <laughs> like I was there. That's where our hotel was, and I'm just like. Yeah. Looking around, it like looked like the year 2040. And a lot, if you live in Northern Virginia, you don't really like travel to Arkansas sometime, and it looks like you're going to the past, like you're yeah. going back to the 70s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or or California, you know, California oh, is like in the future, like seriously. And and you know, I mean, completely compared to New Orleans, like well, San Jose specifically, or like the, any Silicon Valley, yeah, like tech place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They do. They are like in the. They, they, it does sort of seem like they're 20 years ahead of us, you know? Yeah, it's weird. It's you weird. got a question here uh, from wonderful um, icon. From Yankee and Yankee. And this is perfect for you. Question from Tunche. Who's your favorite figure in American history? Uh, probably, um, you know, the greatest, uh, not only the greatest general in American history, um, but the greatest Christian and the greatest man, Robert Edward Lee. Um you have to be a man I hold in very high esteem. Uh, no, I don't. I don't really think I don't. I don't have a favorite. I'm sorry, I don't have a very good answer for that. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have a favorite. I have favorite eras. I have favorite time periods. I have certain sort of like uh, uh, kind of movements and sort of groups that I like to study, and certain sort of philosophies that I like to kind of immerse myself in and really kind of think about, like, ooh, sort of what was it kind of like to be to think from this person's perspective and to uh, sort of see the world from their shoes, um, uh, which I guess I could go into that just very briefly. So I think one of my favorite uh, types of people to empathize with are um, uh, wealthy antebellum slave owners um, in, in the American South, because um, uh, I think it's, 
important to try to empathize with those sorts of people because uh, you read their writings, you read how they thought about the world around them, how they justified the uh, horrible things that they did. Uh, and, you know, um, and and I'm, I'm, I feel like I might be, this is actually a line from an upcoming video, so y'all are getting a preview, but you know, these guys, majority of these guys were not Michael Fassbender going postal with a belt. Um, the, these guys were just people just like you and me who thought they were doing the right thing. And, um, uh, and I think that, uh, and, and especially recently, I feel like just the past six to eight months I've had, uh, which is oddly specific, but <laughs> I'm sorry, but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the past like half a year. Or so I, I've really started to think about how, you know, just sort of seeing a lot of people including myself, like I, I do this. I think it's, you know, sometimes you have to do this when you're judging people in the past because of the horrible stuff that they did, the objectively just immoral stuff that they did. Uh, I think it is maybe important to, I think it's like totally legit. I think that we can and should do that, especially when it comes to the really heinous stuff like, Oh, I don't know, mass murder or pederasty. But, um, mm -hmm. uh, but I also think that as we do that, it is important to maybe, sort of turn that same gaze onto ourselves and think, you know what, we are, we're, we are not at the end of history. We are a product of history. We are people in a march of history that is ongoing. Um, I'm yeah. sure there's stuff that we do individually I'm and in society that is uh, <laughs> utterly vile. And, yeah. um, and I think and, about that all the time. Oh, all the time, all the time. Yeah. yeah and, like, and, and, I think about us. Yeah. Future. And that's kind of the curse of history, right? Is that like, uh, or the curse of sort of knowing about history is is that you you kind of have a deep appreciation of what we have in the modern world because we know sort of where we came from and how how bad it was in so many ways. But we also kind of understand that like, and so yeah, it's important to be kind of grateful for what we have, but it's also important to understand that sort of like societies change and they evolve and they move forward. And what we have today maybe it's pretty good for some people, but it's not good for everybody. And, and history marches on and there's always room for improvement. I don't know. No, what you brought up, I, I could have swore I saw a video on your channel that brought that up before, but maybe it was another channel. I saw a video recently where they are like looking at the perspective of the, uh, the Southern slave owner and how, if you, if anyone essentially was in their shoes, they would have had the same thoughts. I don't know where this is. You didn't make a video like that already. Uh, I've, I've, I've touched on that. Yeah. Okay. I maybe like I've I... touched on that, but I, I think that kind of stuff kind of goes over people's heads. Unfortunately, I think maybe because of my reputation, um, cause that stuff's definitely oh. in my videos, but I think, um, because I got the sort of reputation as sort of the anti-Confederate boogeyman, uh, mm. I feel like there is empathy sort of for, there's sort of sympathy for the devil in my videos, but, uh, but a lot of that stuff I maybe gets overlooked, uh, cause of my reputation, but I don't know, but uh, yeah, I have yeah. touched on that. I have touched on that. Um, and um, I like to touch on it more because I think it's super fascinating and I think it's chilling as well. I think it's like a bit terrifying. Yeah, no, definitely. Because it it makes you wonder what I mean, you think about what's the worst that that we can do, like what's the worst that I can do as a person? And we like to think that it would never happen to us, but it was just ordinary people even during it the totally Holocaust. Would, dude. Yeah, yeah, it totally it, would. Like they yeah, they were doing horrible things. Uh you don't have to answer this question that's on the screen. Um, do you see it? Yeah, uh, there is a 49 minute video <laughs> on my channel called Did the Confederacy Have Better Generals? That will answer. You question. essentially, <laughs> I mean, you, but you see, you, you have, it's not like you just to say grant, you know, like you have a very long winded way of <laughs> yes, <laughs> getting yes. to that point, but. Um, yeah, but the answer is grant. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, um, and then well, all these civil wars. I actually have a civil war question too. We'll get to later, but I, okay. Uh, um, okay. So we're just real quick. I do want to ask uh, my first question to you, to you, Matt. Okay. But, uh, we'll, we'll, um, um, well, but I will just say Gettysburg. I mean, Gettysburg is, you know, has very close, uh, it has a special place in my heart because I worked there and, uh, uh, and lived oh, I didn't in know that. Town, PA. Huh? I didn't know you worked at Gettysburg. Oh, That's really? Awesome. Yeah, wow. yeah, I did. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I worked there for the 150th anniversary. I was a living historian. Uh, I was hired because I had a background in, in acting. Uh, and uh, they wow. wanted, essentially the Rangers, they wanted, um, they had a bunch of, they had reenactors traditionally in that position. 
Um, but I think they, you know, generally those guys are older. They, you know, are, are uh, maybe they don't sort of necessarily like look the part, you know? So what they wanted to get was scraggly, hairy, 20 year old dudes um, with acting <laughs> experience, uh, right? Yeah, so, you know, yeah. to like play these parts and like be these characters. So uh, my buddy Benton and I, who actually, speaking of doing live streams more, I would love to get him on uh, on my channel to reminisce about Gettysburg. I'm sure a lot of uh, my viewers would, would be uh, interested in that. But uh, but yeah, so so I worked there and uh, yeah, it was a blast. I mean, probably the best summer of my life. I mean, it was awesome. My uncle, who I referenced in a recent video, who he wears the Confederate battle flag proudly as a symbol of, of heritage, sure. Um, sure. was there at the 150th celebration. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I might have seen him. I was actually, uh, seen him. I was on, uh, I, I was in the, on the third, I was, I was wearing the gray. I okay. Charge I'll yet. ask him. <laughs> so it's possible that he saw me. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry. We're finally to yeah. your first question for me. Yeah, yeah. So, so my first question um, uh, for Matt is uh, what do you think happens after you die? Oh God. <laughs> You're good. Uh, I think, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows, but we have these crazy ideas. Um, I like to think that we go to a, a happy place. Uh, but honestly, I don't want to be at that happy place very long. Like, frankly, forever terrifies me more than anything, mm -hmm. like being anywhere forever. So I'm hoping that like, you know, maybe and maybe by the time we're old and, you know, we're just like in the show, the uh Black Mirror. I don't know if you've seen that show where we just oh, say the good place, but yeah, <laughs> the good place as well. Yeah, like you just plug in and then like you stay there for a few hundred years and then you're that's good. But like uh, I don't know, and there's nothing wrong with that, folks. Yeah, of course. We don't no, have to. No, nobody knows. knows. Yeah, we nobody just knows. Enjoy our life we're living right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I think. Uh, well, I think that it's. I agree. I completely agree. No idea. Um, and I don't, uh, pr pretend to know. Um, but uh, I do think that there's, I don't know, I'm very, I find the sort of traditional monotheistic idea of heaven very appealing to me in just that, like you're there and your parents are there and your pets are there and you're all together for eternity. But again, that's the thing is that like eternity, right? <laughs> it's like, is anything meaningful unless there's an end, right? It's right. Uh, um, and yeah, that's kind of what uh, I guess makes you think of the good place. The last season of that show is a whole plot point about uh, sort of if heaven lasts forever, then you know you can have everything that you want. It could be the most pleasurable, most amazing utopia ever. But if it lasts forever, then there's no meaning to it and no significance to it. Um, and without so that, pain, yeah. how can you have pleasure? Weren't that old? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you know, but I do I'm, think I I've only seen the first episode of that show, by the way. Oh, really? It's a good one. I was referencing an episode of Black Mirror where they do, where they essentially the same. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the, the San Bernardino, San Johinto. Yeah. The really, the, the really touching romantic one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I, th I think it's sort of beyond anything. Like, I think the, the process of death is just sort of beyond uh, any human comprehension. Like, I think it's, I think there's, I don't think that the individual I'm, I'm open to the afterlife, but I don't think that the individual consciousness survives death. I think that it's sort mm -hmm. of your, you break down into in your con constituent parts, you know, that it's sort of like um, where you kind of sort of sink into this sort of abyss where just the, your ego just shatters and your <laughs> concept and your relationships just shatter and you forget the names of your loved ones and you forget what love is because you have no individuality and you just sort of sink and sink and sink and sink until you are essentially, you know, sort of merged with the, you know, your, your constituent parts, you, you sort of break up into molecules and atoms. And then you sort of are sort of part of the, I, you know, the, the image I often think of is like a dog lying on the side of the road, having just been hit by a car and just like, like a crappy country road, you know, like, like, State Road Number Forty Five Twenty One, and that's just a nameless road with just trash on the side and a thousand skittering insects. And the dog gets hit, and it's panicking, and it's panicking, and it's bleeding out. And then all of a sudden, there's some this like acceptance and this sort of like 
realization that like this is the place and this is the destiny that sort of this dog's entire life has been leading to this moment and there is you know it sort of forgets how the smell of its of its human and it forgets what it means to be loved and what it means to be alive and what it means to be a dog going around and then it just becomes part of this little landscape this shitty landscape at the side of the road covered with trash and and full of bugs and 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 you know scrubby grass but at the same time there's sort of a beauty to that landscape because that's sort of where it happened you know and here i thought all dogs go to heaven i sorry <laughs> um, well, it, well but what you're describing also can be like i've heard people compare that to taking psychedelics like you know um that's, that's why a lot well, of people have a so-called spiritual that's, yeah like, that's how that image came to me to be perfectly honest oh okay <laughs> yeah that makes sense checks out yeah. Um, we keep getting questions for you. This person says, last question for Atun Shea. Do you think there would be any difference in reconstruction if Lincoln was still president instead of Andrew Johnson? I've been asked this before as well. What do you uh, think? Yes, yes I, I think it absolutely would have been. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of uh, President Johnson. Um, <laughs> not yes, a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so yes, I, I think it would have been definitely uh, um, uh, a whole lot uh, different. I do wonder, you know, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it might just be my own personal biases, but I do kind of wonder if maybe a harsher reconstruction would have been better for the country. Um, and, and I do kind of also wonder with Lincoln's sort of, uh, very forgiving attitude, uh, toward, uh, the Rebs, you know, uh, maybe, I, I, I don't know. I don't think that, I think Lincoln's legacy would be a lot more mixed because I'm not sure that his policies would have been um, entirely productive. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah. I, I sort of personally agree more with the sort of radical Republican, um, position about reconstruction, which I know will come as a shock to everyone. <laughs> yeah. You uh, radical you. Channel, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I, I think his, I think his reputation would be a lot more mixed. Um, and I, I agree. Be, it would, yeah. it would be tarnished. I think if yeah. he was around like that's in some way, same thing with JFK, like, their life being cut off short, and especially the way their lives were cut short, um, I think kind of automatically seems to elevate their legacy. Like, yeah. Um, I keep getting this question. I'm just going to like say, hey, um, obviously, if you haven't, if you're new to my channel, you should probably not be surprised if you know my channel that I'm biased against Donald Trump. Like, um, I've never really gone into that though, because I feel like my my own bias is just too much and it's still too early for me to have good enough historical judgment on him i mean uh so that's why i i still haven't ranked him on my presidential tier list and i think i think most of you can assume that um he would not be uh s tier or a tier um, <laughs> or even b tier but um i will say this though um his status went way down for me because of January 6th, like yeah. I forgave a lot of stuff that people criticized him for because um, a lot of it was like overblown. But January 6th, man, like for the, the folks that are downplaying playing it like you, sir, who were there. No, <laughs> no that was a joke, everyone. He didn't actually go. OK, we're caught up. Oh, I got my oh, second no. question that's related to the Civil War because we'll just keep this um, era, I guess. Um, sure. Now, actually, when I was going back and looking over these questions, I was like, this one's kind of boring. So I have an alternate question in case you're like, yeah, that's too boring. OK, so the original question was, how did you learn about the, the American Civil War growing up? Um, is that bo too boring? No, no, I think that's a fascinating question, actually. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, so I. So in elementary school, they told us it was about slavery. Uh, in high school, they said it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, and Wait, then you might tell the audience where you went, to, where you grew up. Yeah. So I grew up in, um, in, in, uh, in a small town in, in Metro West, Massachusetts. Um, and, um, yeah, so basically, you know, it was not, it certainly is not sort of a place where, you know, it's not like growing up in Tennessee or Texas where, you know, they, they explicitly say it had nothing to do with slavery. Uh, they they were pretty open about it. Um, you know, I, I do think that like a lot of the sort of history being uh, a lot of history, at least being like pretty sort of inherently political. Um, 
it is kind of interesting because I do distinctly remember uh, in as early as like middle school, being in social studies and the teacher talking about something about, you know, something about American history and, uh, and me, seventh grade me thinking like, come on, come on. What is this PC crap? What is this politically correct really? bleeding heart crap? Yeah. Yeah. Just like, you know, liberal Massachusetts, you know, and, and, um, and just sort of a lot of, I mean, even, you know, even then, you know, even in the, the sort of, um, early Bush years, uh, it was, it was a lot of sort of cultural sensitivity and, you know, you can't say that, or you can't do that, you know, and, and, um, um, and yeah, and I, I reacted very negatively to it. Uh, and so it was interesting, I guess, uh, uh, that, you know, it was kind of like, it just seemed very political and very bleeding hard to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, you know, uh, certainly I, I think I have a slightly more kind of rounded idea of it now, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I guess my sort of personal journey with the civil war and learning about it, you know, it was, it was never framed to me in school as anything not centrally having to do with slavery. Right. There was definitely like a push, you know, you know, in third grade or whenever we, we learned about it, it was all like, oh, well, you know, it was about, it was a war about whether to keep slavery, which is not true, but uh, that was just sort of the simplified third grade version, right? And then in a push, you got that in third grade? Well, there was like all these, this other stuff, right? There was all this other stuff. There was like decades of just like political maneuvering and tension that like led to this moment. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, you know, a push was very sort of, uh, at least uh, my awesome teacher, Mr. Delaney, was a great guy and, a, and an excellent uh, history teacher. Um, was, you know, sort of very quite insistent. It was just like, but like, here's what it really kind of came down to, right? It was about sort of disagreements about, about slavery. Uh, and, uh, and I guess uh, as I kind of pushed back against that quite a bit uh, as sort of a, a guess of form natural kind of like adolescent rebellion, you know, um, that it's sort of like when everybody when most people in your town are like super liberal, it's only kind of necessary as a moody, angry young man to, you know, maybe take some more reactionary kind of stances as far as that's concerned. And, um, and also I think I, I think I did have some legitimately negative experiences, um, as a stupid kid who just didn't know any better. Um, you know, maybe just like, and, you know, I, I don't think, yeah, just maybe like, uh, uh saying something or like, there was maybe a bit off color or maybe just like just culturally insensitive. And then somebody being very strongly just like, no, like, you know, to heck with you. That is, we don't do that. We don't say that. What's wrong with you? You're terrible. And I think that that's like, that's kind of the, the, and this could be a whole other uh, discussion, but that's kind of the, the sort of uh, the flip side of, of a lot of social progress is sort of that politically correct thing where it's like, we don't give people the benefit of the doubt. Right. And I think like as a kid, sort of growing up in that environment as just being an idiot, just a child who knew nothing yeah. about anything, um, you know, who, I mean, I spent, you know, I watched my favorite thing was to watch Monty Python's Flying Circus, which has like Terry Jones in like blackface, you know, in like Britain in the 60s, you know, and that's like my cultural frame of reference. And nobody told me like, oh, well, Terry Jones doing blackface is not OK. This is like highly offensive. Nobody told me that. And so, you know, when I'm yeah, like, probably been going through the world and, and somebody is just like being a huge jerk to me about this, it's like you have to sort of understand, look, like this is a child, this yeah. person knows nothing about anything. This is not a fully formed brain. You need to come at this from a place of education or from a piece of uh, place of empathy. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to like give them a really bad impression of this sort of stuff. And I think that happened to me. I think like uh, just at a few key moments in my life, specifically like about civil war stuff and about like the his like the horrible parts of like America's racism and stuff. It was just a lot of this information initially was presented to me in a very adversarial way. You know, yeah. and and it kind of made me very uh, made you know, me, my first reaction was just like, ah, eh, screw you, you know, yeah. and uh, and it took me a long time to sort of like get out of that sort of Dave Chappelle mindset. Well, the oh, Dave Chappelle you know? mindset. I think there's two points here, though, like one is how we communicate this stuff is very important because I think you've you've 
you your channel does i mean you've figured out a way to do that where you're not like you literally have changed my mind on things oh um nice. and that's yeah that's amazing like you know me being like a 39 year old man and i'm like watching your stuff and and but also like the other point is like it's one thing oh, you love puritans kid. now so let me just say you, you love puritans Honestly, I'm coming Puritans around. Years, that was one of the videos I was thinking of. You changed my mind about the Puritans. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I'm serious. But no, the other point I wanted to make in response is the um, when you tell a kid you shut him down, like that's offensive. Don't say it. Yeah. That to me is really annoying. And I think that's what, one reason why I made my um, Confederate battle flag video and my MAGA hat video because they need to know why it's offensive. And, and, and sure, it might take some time. It might take yeah. a 15 minute video, but it's important they know why. Otherwise, they're just going to like, you know, it, it's the same reason why my high the high school where I, I taught, um, I would walk in the boys bathroom and see swastikas on the walls, bathroom stalls. It wasn't because that they were Nazis or skinheads. They yeah, no, of course not. They literally were doing it because they knew it would make people mad. Like, yes, it's the same yeah. reason why even people wear the MAGA hat sometimes today. Yeah. It's to troll oh, yeah. people, and we see it yeah. on our Discord servers, and we see it <laughs> like 4chan and 8chan. Like they're just trying to like be the most offensive they can possibly be, and it's kind of funny to me because. I've been to these places and frankly, they're not that scary. Like it, they're, they're, they're trying to outdo each other. And it's just, honestly, it's become to a point where we're all so desensitized to everything. Yeah. So it, it makes me laugh when I think like, Oh, like cancel culture and PC has gotten out of control. But when you really think about it, most people really are real. They're kind of hard to offend these days. They, yeah. That's true. Like, I remember people getting much more easily offended when I was younger. And I know that's anecdotal, but like, yeah. I, I think that it's overblown. People don't get offended that easily. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, talking like, you know, you're talking to the edgiest of edgy former teens. Like I, I dress up as an SS officer now. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine me at 19? Like, you know, it's the Bo Burnham song, you know, I'm problematic, dun -da, you know, uh, you know, he grew up in Massachusetts too. You know, it's like, it's, it's that this stuff like, yeah, it's, it is just like shock people because it works, you know, and these, and it's the same thing in prison, right? With like the Aryan nation and stuff, like those guys who get the swastika tattooed on their face, you know, in prison, they don't actually, they're not reading Mein Kampf. They couldn't care less. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, a, a a primate sort of instinct, right? Of of just. But like, even then, I got Post Malone now with tattoos on. I remember when a tattoo on your face freaked people out. No, now no. everybody has tattoos on their face. It's like, it's, it's I'm, my, I guess my point is, it's becoming really difficult to offend people these days. Like because yeah. so many people are desensitized because of what they've seen online. Like even Grandma has seen some pretty horrible things online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. No, I mean, yeah, it's it's uh, it is hard to to offend people these days, and especially with everybody just kind of online all the time. Um, yeah, it's it's very easy to see just horribly shocking things, and uh, and yeah, I, I do think that a lot of the the most shocking stuff uh, is is simply just done to to be shocking, you know, True. and um, yeah. and I think that anybody, yeah, and I, I think any sort of angry young man who uh, uh, wants to lash out at in a juvenile way can like understand that impulse, you know, um, doesn't excuse that sort of behavior, but I think it does sort of right. make, it, make it understandable, you know? Uh, but anyway, um, my Patreon uh, supporter has a question for you. Uh, the King James book, demonology. Uh, uh, so yeah. demonology is a great book. It's not a great book. It's a horrifying book. Um, but um, uh, so demon demonology is sort of the, um, one of the seminal um, British Protestant texts texts about witch hunting uh, it was written by King James, uh, uh, who later was King James I of, of England and Scotland. Uh, he was James the, uh, the sixth of Scotland at the time. 
written in 1597. And basically it is a manual. It's a witch hunting manual. And it is presented in, uh, in terms of, it's, it's a dialogue, right? So it's, it's the, it's the checkmate Lincolnites of its day, right? It's, it's two characters who are debating these, these, uh, uh, these issues. And so basically one of the characters is um, skeptical about witches. He's not even sure they exist. He doesn't even think if they do exist, they're a big problem. And then the other guy is basically persuading him, no, witches do exist and they are a huge problem and we need to deal with them. Um, and uh, so it is. Uh, is that it? it? Yes. Demonology. Yep. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a pretty short book uh, and um, but it has essentially like a lot of the basis for uh, at least sort of Protestant uh, early modern um, uh, witch hunting. Uh, and, and a lot of the, and the cool thing about it is that it is very logical. And this is kind of the beauty of uh, the, the sort of Puritan mindset. Um, and obviously I see that with a fuck with a gigantic amount with 40 asterisks, because this is considering, <laughs> you know, the, the subject matter is, is, we're going to hang people for an imaginary uh, supernatural crime. But um, uh, but the sort of uh, the really interesting thing is that it's super logical, right? It is it is uh, it's almost humanistic or like kind of proto humanistic. It is um, you can almost kind of see sort of like sort of the 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 echoes of like, yeah, again, there's sort of like in in Puritanism, there you sort of even with all of their problematic aspects and even with all the absolutely horrible stuff that they did do a lot of their reasoning and their philosophy you can see kind of the echoes of the enlightenment right and that's very mm. much the case of demonology these are reasoned logical arguments that that james is making right it isn't it isn't motivi uh, motivated by emotion it isn't motivated even particularly by religious dogma it is a it is Okay, so like A leads to B and B leads to C. It's like, okay, so if the Bible says this about how, you know, about witches, then that means that this phenomenon that we, the supernatural event that, you know, based on our ideas of the time definitely does happen. When this happens, that means that it's referring to this biblical verse, which then um, makes, you know, it sort of ensures that we must have this response, right? And that, and, and um, I don't know if, if this is kind of making sense, but it's, it's a yeah. very logical progression with everything. And it is like, it's very much well, based like, on religion, but anyway, yeah, anyway. I would say it like this, like I would compare it to like a fantasy writer, like um, J.R.R. Tolkien. World you building, know? yeah. Yeah, like they, they have this whole world they've created that makes everything logical in this world. Like Middle Earth is logical for all of those books. Yeah. Whereas if you come out to reality, none of it is logical, but within that world, of course it's logical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The other, the other big one is, um, uh, is, uh, a guide to grand jurymen by Richard Bernard. And actually that one, um, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the guy that I mentioned in my in defense puritanism video, Robert Califf, who wrote the, like taking down the Salem, witch trial yeah. magistrates with facts and logic, who wrote that book, <laughs> uh, he, a lot of that book that he wrote was like a takedown of a guide to grand jury men, because that was like oh. the, that was kind of like the follow-up, like um, uh, demonology was in the 1590s and guide to grand jury men was in the 1640s. I think, uh, I think it was like civil war period, but it was, uh, it was a much longer, much more in depth guide to demonology and to witch hunting. Um, and that's where I get a lot of the information from the witch finder general videos from, uh, and uh, yeah, those are kind of the two seminal kind of Protestant texts. Once you sort of like sort of widen the scope into sort of Europe as a whole and sort of where you bring the Catholic church into, a, into the mix, it's a little bit different. They've got the Malleus Maleficarum, which is like the, the hammer of witches, which is like the, uh, which is early, early days. That's like 15th century. So that's like the uh, uh, foundational sort of Catholic witch hunting text. Um, and uh, as far as how it uh, uh, figures into my my film, um, the Sudbury Devil, uh, uh, very strongly uh, as it, as it does with with everything. I mean, um, um, yeah, the Sudbury Devil is all about um, the sort of more poisonous aspects of Puritan culture and how that relates to the foundation of America and uh, the supernatural sort of beliefs uh, and practices of that culture are very strongly represented. It is very much you know 
a movie about witches and witchcraft. Um, so yeah, uh, a very strong influence in that. But you'll just have to wait and see it when it comes out. Yeah. Maybe in a year or two. Uh, <laughs> we're shooting uh, it this yeah. spring. So yeah, uh, yeah finally. Whenever. Yeah. Uh, we have three more super, super chats. We'll just try to go through them really quickly here. Yes or yeah, no? Is, yeah. is Byzantine Empire, the Roman Empire? <laughs> yes or no? Um, I'm not trying to understand the question. Uh, like a continuation of the Roman Empire. Oh, I mean, um, that depends on who you ask. I mean, I was going to say, yeah. I lean more towards uh, no, but I'm maybe I'm biased from my Western Civ classes I took. Uh, uh, and then we've got, oh, I lost it. Sorry. Um, do you have any interest in Russian history? Um, Rasputin, of course. <laughs> Uh, I think they're more asking you though. Have you seen the uh, the trailer for the new Kingsman movie? No. Oh my god! Do you, do you do you like the Kingsman's the spy movies? I am aware of them. I have never actually no. They never... are uh, a ridiculous amount of fun, in, in my humble opinion. But the uh, the new okay. one is uh, takes place in uh, uh, like Rasputin is a major character, and it takes place sort of in in um, Tsarist Russia. Uh, and it's like about the formation of the Kingsmen and, and Ralph Fiennes is in it, I guess. And Rasputin is doing backflips and, you know, shooting people. <laughs> I love him as an actor, so I might have to check that out. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, uh, Tater Tate, uh, what civil, do, uh, civil uh, sites, civil war sites, I assume, you recommend to visit in Georgia and Florida? Um, I am not super familiar with the civil war sites in either of those states, um, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, well, should you, should we move on to our other, other question here or? Yeah. I don't even remember where we're at. Um, but... uh, I think we're at question two. <laughs> Do you have question two for me now? Uh, I, I could ask you, I don't think you asked question or no, maybe you did. You did. I asked, yeah. I asked two. So you're, it's your turn. Second question. Um, uh, okay. Uh, so my second question is, uh, Matt or Matthew, uh, Matthew, sure. um, so uh, tell me, uh, Matthew, uh, <laughs> tell me, uh, I live in Vancouver, uh, Matthew. Um, <laughs> um, what side would you have been on during the American Revolution? Real uh, talk. I think I would have been one of the third that would have been neutral. I hate to say it. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to be like, oh, I'd be right there with Sam Adams, you know, yeah. like uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people, you know, it's kind of like the the Monday uh, quarterback type of deal is that the same? I love you, like, JJ. I love you. Uh, anyway, sorry, um, he's in here and he's. Oh, oh, hey, JJ. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, yeah, he's, he's watching. I love but, you. Uh, Seriously, I love you. The uh, the I I think uh, the Monday Monday morning quarterback phenomenon in history where he's just like, yeah, yeah I'd be right there fighting with him, you know, like mm, would you, you know, like I think uh, you know you had a third that were loyalists, a third. This is what some historians say it's disputed, but a third loyalist, a third that were the rebels, a third that were kind of like, ah, I just, I just want to, you know, grow some, uh, some crops here, but I would be growing some crops and I probably would be going West and like trying to avoid the conflicts. And, you know, uh, I think it, I would have been sympathetic, obviously to George Washington and his, but a lot of those people that were like, you know, the Declaration of Independence. I mean, that was all elites, you know. I'm, I have th this yeah. anti-elite way about me. Like, where if, Absolutely. like, somebody, who I, even somebody who I admire and, um, you know, is inspiring to me, if they get too much power, if they're in Congress a few years, I'm like, I don't like you anymore, dude. You're yeah. one of them, you know? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah totally, <laughs> so, like, totally. who are these yeah. people in Philadelphia who, like, they're all, like, snobbish uh you know, think they they're better than everyone. Like they just want to be free, just so they pay less taxes. Like, how does that affect me as a poor? Why am I automatically assuming that if I was alive back then, that I'd be like a poor farmer? I don't know. I probably would be statistic. Because, probably, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm like, it's always it's always funny when I like, I, I don't know. Being into history, I'm sure you hear this a lot, but a lot of people like to talk about their ancestry, which I think is like really cool. And it is, it can be really fun to like hear about people's ancestry and hear their stories. But when somebody's just like, oh, well, you know, my ancestor came over on the endurance, 
you know, with John Winthrop and he was in Massachusetts in 1632 and it was, oh yeah. And, and, oh, and I know my entire family history going back to Gilgamesh. And so it's like, must be nice. You know, my, my people were all Serbian peasants. Uh, <laughs> well, just, I was going to say like, it's you know, probably I, like a, it starts a 80 years ago. And then before that, it's just all nameless, faceless people going back into prehistory. It's like, uh, well, they're yeah. only remembering that one person, but they're forgetting the rest of the tree as well. Sure. That's another yeah. thing, you know, Yeah, true. like most true. of your tree was is not notable. I'm sorry. It's forgettable. Like the rest of us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I definitely, I, I appreciate that answer because I do think like, um, yeah, honestly, I probably would have been a, uh, uh, you know, again, I like to think that I would be right there with Sam Adams. Absolutely. But like, realistically, yeah, I think I would have been, you know, I would have been the, um, uh, and, you know, maybe as like a young man, as like a 22 year old, maybe I would have been there at Valley Forge starving and freezing, you know, uh, uh, my butt off. But, um, but like now, you know, I'm in a long term relationship. I have a dog. Uh, <laughs> I have people who need me. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, it's not a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> I have subscribers who need me. Uh, no, but seriously, it's like, you know, it's, it's, and, and I think, you know, I, I don't think it's given the events of 2020. I mean, I, 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 you know, it certainly crossed my mind last year, you know, where it's just like, what if I've got to like get the people I love out of the country? Yeah. You know, and like, that's ultimately my priority. And it's like, you know, and I have principles and I have ideals and I have strong political beliefs but at the same time, it's like when it really comes down to it, you know, when people are shooting each other in the street, it's like, you know, where's my girlfriend? Where's my dog? Where's my mom? How can I keep them safe? You know what I mean? Like, that's ultimately where my head is going to be. And like, as yeah. far as and, and America, fuck America. I'm sorry. Screw America. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> it's, like, it's, all right. it's like that is so secondary to just like my loved ones, you know? And I think that's in that sort of, in a, you know, if I was in my house in Lexington and watching people shooting each other at, uh, on the green, it would be like, honey, pack your bags. We're going to Canada. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I just could not, you just like could not risk the death of my loved ones. Like ultimately at the end of the day, like that's the important thing. Yeah. And I, I think about that too, with like something like the draft historically, you know, like the 200,000 people that, uh, evaded the Vietnam War draft, and like I think about what I have been one of them. Uh, there's a good chance I would have been. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, I mean, the fact that like if you look at today, you mentioned like this past year, it crossed your mind. Well, you know there are there's a growing talk, sadly, of people who are like, well, we're going to have another civil war, even though it may look a lot differently, and. While I personally don't think this is the case, the yeah. reason why that is is because the people that are that seem to want to go to war seem to be a very small number, like very small. Like I'm talking less than point, yeah. like less than half a percentage of, of the country. And these are the people who truly are desperate, I think economically have been dealt a bad hand. And because I, I I follow a lot of these Q folks like and you, you notice patterns, you notice things. And yeah. it's not like, I mean, sure, they, they, a lot of pe people were bringing up like, like the fact that the, the demonstrators on January 6th, we keep bringing up January 6th, but like it was a historical day. Um, but the, a lot of the protesters were um, actually fairly privileged in society, had good jobs. And like, you know, some of them flew yeah. on a private upper middle class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you're. But the more I find out about them, I realize that they actually, when it came down to it, they're not, they weren't going to go into the Capitol. The, the, the people that actually stormed the Capitol, were, they, those are desperate folks. And mm. you talked about empathy earlier. You got to have empathy for what they're going through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because what, what is the alternative? Shoot them? Yeah. Ex well, when you got nothing else to lose, that's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, and I think it's, and I, th I also think that the people, I do think that it's like, uh, this last thing I'll say about it, but um, I think that it's not only, I think it's sort of a mixture between the people who think they have nothing to lose 
and who genuinely are in like really dire straits and also people who just have no uh who have the the, the least conception about what an armed insurrection or what like an unstable society would actually entail you know and and yeah. what it would actually mean in the real world and not yeah. in a movie you know i i think that's like a big part of it is people have um they have this very cinematic idea of you know mel gibson with the flag you know <laughs> hold the line you know i mean yeah again, uh, like, you you heard these you know you heard these people on january 6th like hold the line you know freedom it was movie stuff it, it was yeah. lord of the rings type of stuff it was not real life i'm gonna you know storm the bastille you know and but anyway anyway hmm. we can we can move on we can move on no that's fascinating um this is another kind of direction oh, okay. napoleon uh, <laughs> um i think he was a i think he was a bad force i know i kind of make light of napoleon but um i shouldn't do that like i made a song a parody song about him and everything dressed up like him i dressed up as hitler too once <laughs> for us i'm just it, i'm just trying to teach my high schoolers but anyway um <laughs> It was in the name of education. I swear it was. Like, You're in good company, Matt. I, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> Who you're yeah, talking to? Late, but <laughs> I think yeah, he was a warmonger. He was a yeah. You know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of Napoleon. I, I um, uh, yeah, I think he um, yeah, I, I think ultimately he was in it for himself, and and if he had some good ideas, uh, totally, uh, he had some good ideas, but um, yeah, but but you know, ultimately he he got a, 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 an unimaginable number of people killed. I mean, yeah, it's just a, overwhelmingly, I think he was a destructive negative force. Um, but I don't know about this one, uh, who would to play George Washington in a biopic. I don't know enough actors, frankly. I mean, I, I, th I, don't, I don't think you could do much better than the guy who played him in HBO, John Adams, the miniseries. Yeah, what um, was his name again? I forgot his name. I don't remember. He's 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 been around. He was in uh oh God, he's been he's he's been around. Um he's a character actor, looked the part, he's just perfect, David Moore. soft spoken, kind of modest, sort of uh um yeah, he was he was just great. Uh, I, yeah. I honestly could not it, it's hard for me to to think of uh of anybody else as, as George Washington. Uh, as John Adams, I think Paul Giamatti did a great job, but I think that also William Daniels will always be John Adams in my heart. You know, <laughs> in 1776. Yeah, yeah. Uh do psychopathic billionaires rule the world? I think more or less, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think they're all psychopathic. I think actually only a small percentage of them are. Uh, yeah. And then uh, if you had a different job, what would it be? It would definitely be a, uh, I'd go into, I'd be a hedge fund manager. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, uh, I'm, I honestly don't know either because I kind of love what I'm doing now. So, yeah. Um, okay, um, let's keep it back on track here. My yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, I actually, you mentioned your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Dad. Um, a question related to that, like how I, my, I actually wrote this down. How does your significant other feel about the whole YouTube thing? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like it's a great question. Annoyed by it or something like, does she uh, get more involved? Just kind of let you do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's, um, you know, she, she's very supportive. She's always been super supportive. We were together, uh, when I was, you know, unemployed and making videos for, you know, three people, you know, and, and no one wow. was watching my stuff. Um, and she was always been very supportive and was always like, you're, it's going to blow up. Your videos are amazing. Like you're gonna be like huge on YouTube. You know, she was just always like, just very, and not in like a blowing smoke up my butt kind of way. Like it was like, she genuinely meant it. She was like, you are going to succeed at this. Um, and uh, so, yeah, she, she was very, uh, always very supportive, like right from the very beginning. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, she will like, uh, help me, um, uh, you know, she, especially in the early days, she would like help me film and stuff. And, 
uh, and, and, you know, it was not always the most pleasant thing. <laughs> a lot of it was me messing up my lines and going, you know, and, and cursing and, uh, and, and being mad at myself for, you know, not, you know, being a hundred percent perfect in my delivery and everything. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've kind of more recently, um, I've, I've sort of, you know, and a lot of this comes with like being, uh, I guess kind of a, a sort of creative type of person and also kind of turning 30 and having a bunch of friends who are also filmmakers or creative type of people. Um, it was sort of reached to the point where, um, having a certain amount of YouTube subscribers and being, I guess, kind of successful in, in the way that I have been has, uh, given me like a little bit of legitimacy, like among sort of my friends and frequent collaborators here in New Orleans, like the actors and the filmmakers that I typically like enlist to like make movies with and stuff. And, um, uh, but of course, you know, now that we're old, it's not like, oh, come on, we'll make movies together and like, it'll be fun. And we'll like hang out. It's like, oh, come help me with this video. It's like, okay. So like, uh, how much will you be paying me? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, I've like been hiring people, you know, to like help out. Um, just like friends from film school and stuff. And, and, uh, cause yeah, it's just like not, you know, if it's a for-profit operation, like ultimately like this is my yeah. job. Uh, so, you know, it's like only fair. Um, so yeah, there's kind of been more of that recently where it's like, thankfully, like my girlfriend doesn't have to like stand out in the rain at the <laughs> Chalmette battlefield in new Orleans and like, you know, I've my made my wife do that. So yeah. 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 So now I, you know, I, I pay another one of my friends who, you know, actually has a degree in this type of stuff to do it, you know? So, uh, um, but yeah, I, it's also, she's been, um, uh, she's got sort of projects of her own going on that I've been sort of helping her with. So oh, cool. I feel like Does it's she have a YouTube of, channel? Um, uh, she's, she's got certain social media stuff going. Uh, I don't oh. want to, I, I, I keep pretty tight lid on that type of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, no, sorry. No, no, it's, it's fine. I just like, I, it's just none of these, if it was just us, I'd like totally tell you all about it. But like, frankly, <laughs> yeah. it's not business, there's 400 so. people watching. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, Thanks for being but, here, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, and and yeah. I'm, and thank you for being here. I never, I haven't thought, <laughs> thanked you yet, but uh, you can go ahead with your your third question. Oh shout out God, to yeah. Mr. Only Peter. our third question. <laughs> Mr. Sorry, Peter, I haven't, paid a, oh. I haven't paid a nickel to either. So, <laughs> uh, so my third question is, is what is your best? drunk story <laughs> oh you're turning this in from pg to pg-13 right now and i warned us about um uh, okay well I know, i'm i'm sorry yeah, guys i know i'm i'm I, I was telling matt before we went i was just like i'm 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 gonna try to keep it like PG, but I'm such a spaz. I'm a no, spaz I, from Boston. It's just kind of who I am. Like, I'm going to try my best. Long. And I have. I, I hope I, yeah. Uh, but um, I'll keep it vague yeah, too. That way, you know, I, yeah. I mean, I went to college for several years, too many years, and uh, not Van Wilder quite like my, but like the second and third time go around, I was like, you know, married and then with, with children. But the first go around, I went to the University of Kansas. And so there's plenty of stories. Uh, <laughs> It's amazing that I'm alive, frankly. And a lot of times it wasn't me that was, I was usually the, you know, the the rational one who um, consumed adult beverages. But um, I may or may have not have been in a car one time with, I mean, this was a Camaro uh, that could seat four people. There may have been or may have not have been eight people in the, in the Camaro and we may or may have not driven down the wrong side of the road for about a mile before going off and into someone's yard and uh, find out later the driver uh, who was supposed to be the designated driver. Uh, he had a, he had been not uh, responsible that night, oh, God. <laughs> had a few. So. Uh, Poor life decisions. My brain wasn't fully developed to that point yet, so that's my defense. But um, and that is a legitimate defense, Matt. I, you know, there's more. Sadly, there's more stories like that. It's amazing that we're all still alive when you really think about it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say too much. Uh, no, totally, totally, totally. Whatever you're comfortable with. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I'm not sure I have like that many, uh, that that many great stories like that. I do have a a, a nice and gross story, um, which is well, before you, know, before you start like on that story. Can I say something? Yeah, of course. I, yeah, of all my history YouTuber um, folks that I know that. Uh, I mean, I, I would call us all friends. Yeah, we're kind of like, but like uh, you in particular seems like the one who would be like a real life drunken history episode. Like you would have a party, <laughs> like it would, you would be that guy. Is that a good thing? <laughs> That's a good thing though. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's okay. Go yeah. ahead with your story. Your drunken history. Yeah, no, uh, well, it's so, <laughs> um, so this is the, uh, this this is nothing like like really bad like this is this is this isn't obscene but it is gross um uh so so I, so I'll tell it I don't know if it's my best drunk story but um but there was a uh there's a there's a parade here in New Orleans called Chewbacca's uh which a bunch of white hipsters came up with <laughs> in the 20th century Mardi Gras uh, wasn't enough huh to uh uh to basically you know it's it's a it's a nerd parade, right? It's the nerd parade. It's the Star Wars parade. It's you know everybody gets oh. dressed up as Kylo Ren, and does this parade, right? So um uh, and it's during Mardi Gras season. Um it's it's a blast, or at least it used to be. The last Chewbacca in twenty nineteen was a little underwhelming, to be honest. But um, uh, but I think this was like twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. You know, we went to Chewbacca. Uh, I was dressed as uh, this was definitely after Rogue One came out because I was dressed as um uh uh, uh Lord Commander. Director Orson Krennic. Uh, I had a uh, Spirit Halloween Orson Krennic costume on. Okay. Uh, and um, and at uh, we were at uh, Cajun's Pub, uh, seeing Chewbacca, the Nerd Parade, and everything. And um, uh, and and Cajun's Pub is like a very seedy bar that with a very strong pour. So I was very drunk, uh, extremely hammered, and um, we. And it was Saturday night. And back then I was a tour guide here in New Orleans and I did cemetery tours of St. Louis number one. And Sunday morning was like my day. You know, the Sunday was my money making day. I had a 10 a.m. tour and a uh, 1.15 p.m. tour. And that was and it was my favorite tour. I was always the most enthusiastic about it. it was, I did the best like with tips on those tours. Uh and uh, and I had work in the morning, and I but I got way too drunk, um, and uh, and I'm already a bit of a night owl, so it it definitely had like you know, it was it was bad, and I was out until like three in the morning, you know, so went back home to get some uh, much needed sleep, and <laughs> I was uh, in bed with my girlfriend, and uh, and I just you know fell like immediately asleep, uh, and then about an hour later. Uh, I have no memory of this at all. But my girlfriend says that I turned on the light, waking her. I sat up in bed and I just projectile vomited all over the wall, all over my nightstand, just like exorcist, just bah! And then I fell immediately back to sleep. <laughs> and so my poor girlfriend had to get out of bed get the cleaning, like the, the, you know, all purpose cleaner thing had to clean up all of my vomit, all my whiskey vomit, uh, and then go back to sleep. And then I woke up at, you know, 8 AM to do my tours, obviously feeling like, you know, death. Uh, and, um, uh, and yeah, I was in the doghouse for a very long time. And the smell, <laughs> Matt, the smell oh. was appalling for days in our room. And there's just like, no, it, it was appalling. And I, and I tried everything, baking soda. Like I went and I bought I, I, the kitchen sink of cleaning supplies and, and I was like working on it and I did. And eventually it just kind of dissipated just with time. Or but, you got used uh, to it. <laughs> and, and my house, like, you know, my neighborhood flooded very badly during Hurricane Katrina. And my house was, my landlord bought it up, this house up in 2006, six cynically slapped a coat of paint over everything and then started renting it. So like my house is like rotting from the inside and uh, the floorboards have cracks. Right. And so the vomit got in the cracks. Oh. And so for weeks, for weeks, there was vomit in the cracks because it was, it was everywhere. Matt. It was everywhere. <laughs> That's the quote of the night. That's the quote of the show that I lead it in with. That's my, For I'm, weeks, there was vomit in the crack. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry to inflict that training. story on you all. Um, we, everybody appreciates that story. I'm sure everyone loved it. 
<laughs> Hopefully they were eating. Uh, so yeah. We... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just, I like grossing people out. Um, anyway. You, I'm glad I, I put this comment on the screen because I, I really love that um, the Frozen 50s man, I, like that might still be my favorite video of, your, of yours. Oh, thank you. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've seen multiple comments ask if there's going to be a part two, if, if that's in the future. Is that, I'm assuming? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've already started started writing it. Um, I have started to feel a little bit of the pressure. Like, I feel like it was, um, normally it's when's the next Checkmate Lincolnites, but I feel like the past month or whatever, people have kind of started to, to be, they've been uh, George R. R. Martining me a little bit. Um, about Frozen 50s, man. They'd be like, where is it, man? Uh, yeah. I've, I've already started writing it. It, it is happening. And um, and we're, we're all very excited to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, and and um, I think I've talked about this elsewhere on social media, but it's just like, it's a massive thing. Like, you know, it's uh, actors and like, I'm paying all my actors and like crew members and oh, yeah. locations. And, you know, I mean, the last one we shot it over like three weekends. Uh, and, and even that was like, you know, a little bit too much, right. That th those, we were like doing like 12 plus hour days, you know, and, and, wow. um, yeah, it was just like a lot. Uh, and I actually lost money on that, like, uh, on frozen Tiffy's man episode one, cause it was just like so expensive, which, you know, I don't, I don't care. I don't give a crap. Um, uh, that's not important to me, but, uh, um, I, I, yeah, especially for something like that, which is sort of like, um, yeah, because I love just like making movies and like fiction movies have always been like kind of what I want to sort of graduate to, you know, um, after YouTube. So I love that stuff. That's like, you know, my my reason for existing is like to make yeah. stuff like Frozen Fifties, man. But so it, it's not about the money, but it is just, you know, it's an endeavor, right? It's it's a it's an operation, you know. So um uh so just this stuff takes takes time, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I guess that was all fiction, but it, it seemed like a <laughs> you, you can learn a lot yeah. from it. <laughs> you, um, highly recommend if you haven't seen um, the fifties. Um, what's the the actual video title again? Um, um, it's just Frozen Fifties Man Episode One. Frozen. Uh, 50s yeah, it's, it's my web series, Frozen Fifties Man. Okay. A, uh, I play Dick Jet, um, a a a private <laughs> investigator from the nineteen yeah. fifties who is cryogenically frozen by a diabolical Nazi scientist, uh, and is broken <laughs> in, in twenty twenty one. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's, it's very entertaining. Um, so we'll get to my fourth question here. <laughs> I think that's what we're finally at, right? Yeah. I yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, cause I'm going out of order here, but I'd mentioned earlier that you changed my mind on, um, at least two things, two examples I can think of is the Puritan video. And then I remember the Confederate statues video. Yeah. I remember your comments um, on that one. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just it had a big effect on me. So, um, another example like that, that you didn't do, but like, uh, another, it got me thinking differently about something is, uh, the, the channel philosophy tube has a video about, uh, abortion that got me thinking about it in a way I've never thought about it before. Mm. I highly recommend that one. Yeah. But anyway, uh, my question <laughs> is what do you think is the best way to change somebody's mind? You do it well. What do you, th do you realize what you're well, doing? Well, that is, uh, honestly, that's very encouraging to hear that you think I do that well. I often, uh, I'm not sure I agree. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think I do. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I don't know if I agree. I, I, I like to think that I can do that, but um, can I change yeah. your mind? Yeah, I'm that sorry. I can change people's minds. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I, well, I don't know. I just don't know if I can. I, I know, like, I mean, I know I have, but I don't know. Sort of necessarily. I guess kind of what I worry about is that. Again, it's like a reputational thing, and like, is that sort of once you become the civil war guy, then you can never really think about the civil war objectively ever again. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's at that point, it's tied up in your identity. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and then like, you're thinking about the audience too much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and it's like, and I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm writing a, uh, or I, I just finished writing, which I'm hopefully going to start shooting this weekend up a uh, civil war, um, uh, video. 
And, um, and I found myself many times kind of, kind of like trying to check myself and just being like, wait, am I like, you know, sort of, sort of talking about, and, and I'm talking about Confederates, like it is about Confederate officers. That is the subject of the video. And it's like, uh, well, two Confederate officers and one guy who, you know, maybe pretended that his war record was more impressive than it was. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but it, I constantly had to think like, okay, am I like, I would sort of like read something that that one of these guys had written. And I think like, okay, well, here's like, you know, what they thought about about slavery or about sort of the great issues of the day and sort of I'll include that. And then I have to stop myself and be like, wait, am I like, is this just me and my biases like coming through, right? Is this like, because this is part of my identity now, because I am the Checkmate Lincolnites guy, am I like being unfair to this person, you know? Right. Um, even if it is like something baldly horrific, you know, uh, um, where somebody is, you know, like this one guy, um, this one brigadier general who I've, I've been writing about uh, has a uh, a pamphlet where he he literally um, uh, compares black people to dogs, um, uh, and 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 he does it in a way that, in his mind, was like this is a positive comparison, right? And and yeah, and like obviously racism. Yeah, it's it's horrifying, right? But it's like, okay, yeah, maybe I need to like think about this more in his terms. Like, you know, it's it's yeah, it's hard. I haven't quite figured out how to navigate that. And honestly, I think like, you know, I don't know. I think I might. You like, just answered my question. I don't know. Yeah, I need to answer your question. You did. Anyway, no, you literally just answered my question okay. because essentially what you're saying is like you have to go deep where they are where the opposite side yeah. is yeah which i think you you often go there like you I, I i find that a lot of people that i agree with politically or on social issues whatever it is like yeah no disrespect to any of them but a lot of them i think are not changing minds because they are for, for starters like the tone is very Kind of like, you know, growing up in, in middle school, you know, those teachers like, don't, do do you know, like, yeah, 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 um, yeah, shut yeah. you down. Well, and I think um, that, like, I'll never forget when I um, was, um, this was when I was in college the second time. So this was like uh, to get an education degree. And I, that was 2009 when I f got that. But I, that was around that time, there was a, um, a protest on campus of the University of Nebraska, Omaha. And these people, I agreed with what they were protesting. They were protesting something to do with like, um, it was like criminal justice. Like I was like, yeah, but the way that they were doing it, um, they were just saying some very hurtful things and shutting down this event. Yeah. And the, the people that like put on this event, like they didn't even, I don't even know if they really, like, these are the right people to even be talking to, you know? Yeah. That's another thing, knowing where the audience is like the thing about youtube a lot of people don't realize this but it is very right leaning you as a platform overall did you how do you notice that right yeah <laughs> like um oh absolutely dude yeah yeah and like i don't know i, I, I mean guess and twitter is the opposite like you know it was certain oh yeah. it's not yeah i mean twitter is like well is, the twitter is like it's left leaning but it's the moderate left leaning I notice if you're a little bit too far left leaning, like they'll go after you too. I, that's what I've noticed. I don't know. really because that's yeah, it seems to be. I don't know. I, I feel like uh, yeah, it's slice. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes I mean, you know, I I am on Twitter too much. Me too. So <laughs> that's why that's why I reached out to you on there the first time we ever met. I ever messaged you. I messaged you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So uh, even though like you have my phone number. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, no, it, it, I'm on Twitter too much. And, and it is sometimes I do see like, and I just mute people who are dicks to me. Uh, I don't block because like, I don't know, that just seems desperate. I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to like see them, but I also don't think that they should be like not saying stuff, you know, I, I, like yeah. what they think of me is not my business. Um, and, and they can think whatever they want. Um, uh, even if it is like truly vile stuff, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, I mean, if somebody is just sort of like a, a Nazi, then yeah, it's like, of course I'm going to mute them. It is interesting. Cause I, uh, 
you know, because I feel like on Twitter, because Twitter is so skewed to the left, um, uh, and also just because I think my audience generally, you know, leans left, it's like interesting because sometimes I'll see like somebody commenting on my tweets and it's just like somebody will say like, love your stuff. And it's, you know, Stalin communist 74 hammer and sickle, you know? And it's like, <laughs> what? maybe like a lot of those people I do mute to be honest. Uh, Cause it's like, but I do a lot of the times, like I check, it's just, okay. It's like, if you, you could say you're a communist and that's like, fine. There's like, you know, it isn't quite the same thing, right. As like, being a Nazi where, you know, your entire worldview is, is, you know, based on genocide, you know, you could be just like <laughs> a, a think like, Oh, well, I love this like pie in the sky idea of communism, you know, yeah, because it's like, I studied political science in, in college, but like if there comes sort of a point where it's just like, where people are like, Oh no, Stalin was a good guy actually. Yeah. And that's, that's a hard ban for me. Is this on here. urban dictionary? Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, that's a hard no for me. Go ahead. I'm going to coin the term in case it's not already there. Re-Stalinization. Because I've noticed that trend. There's yeah, I don't like it. It disturbs me. It disturbs yeah, me Yeah, young quite people in particular. Gen Zers that think Stalin was a great, great guy. Like, Yeah. Okay. I anyway. very disturbing. Um, like, I do think that I generally, like, I, I do want to, like, temper this by saying that, like, I do think that the far right is, like, a much bigger problem. I oh, think yeah. the, the far left generally is not taken very similar uh, very like seriously in a similar way. Um, like I think if, if we're like seriously talking who is the most likely to overthrow our republic, it's yeah. not tankies on Twitter. It's it's right. Christian yeah. nationalists, right? It's like the QAnon crowd. Um, right. But uh, but anyway, um, uh, I have a so we're kind of talking about about sort of political stuff and about sort of changing minds and about sort of like disagreements with people. So I do have a question kind of related to that. Uh, we're going a little bit of out of order here. Yeah. Um, but uh, so my um, my fourth question is, uh, and also speaking of Twitter, you've been pretty vocal on Twitter about uh, COVID and uh, the vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't really seem to have uh, much patience for, for uh, people who deny COVID's existence or do not want to get the vaccine. Um, sadly, it is a political issue. Uh, that's just kind of, you know, I'm really unfortunate. It should not be. Um, but, you know, yeah. uh, unfortunately, we don't live in an ideal world and it is a political issue now. Uh, we both live in red states, right? We're right. In Kansas, I'm in Louisiana. Um, Blue how do you, red states. Yeah. I mean, how do you navigate that sort of uh, uh, ideas about the pan pandemic and about the vaccine. How do you navigate that with maybe friends and neighbors and family who maybe are not uh, really, you know, who, who, th who think very differently from you, not just on a political, but on terms of like values in terms of, right? And yeah, I don't know. How do you navigate that, those differences, especially specifically with COVID? Yeah, I, I do have relatives and friends, um, actually from all sides of the political spectrum who, um, are against the COVID vaccine, vaccines, you know, all of them. Um, I have former students who have, you know, reached out to me saying like they disagree strongly with me on the vaccines. And uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, my main uh, thing I try to get across, my main, my main point is that I, I, I'm not an expert, um, but neither are they. <laughs> That's the key part. Um, I, I get very, um, I guess, triggered, for lack of a better word, when I see people go on social media and pretend like they're experts about something that they just learned a few, they watched a few YouTube videos about. Um, yeah. And then they're attacking people that have literally dedicated their entire lives, you know, 30 years, 40 years to, um, you know, as an immunologist. And then you're just like, I mean, imagine the, the I, I tell them a lot, like my, I'm not going to say who this was, like a very close relative of mine who I, who means um, a lot to me. Um, very, we're very close, who yeah. has been afraid, frankly, because of all the negative media coverage, um, mostly driven by Fox News, who Fox News, of course, has very strict policy themselves uh, for the vaccine, like yeah, <laughs> testing and yeah. vaccine ma mandates. But regardless, um, I he's been manipulated. 
He has yeah. been manipulated because most of us are easily manipulated. Let's just get that off the bat. Myself yeah. included. Uh, Myself very much included too. Yeah. I like to think I'm getting better as I get older, but yeah. <laughs> Um, at not being manipulated, but yeah, so he's been manipulated and he's a victim in all this. And, yeah. and, uh, my, uh, well, I have another relative who almost died. Um, we have pretty good genetics in my family as we found out watching my, um, uh, DNA episode. If you, I don't know, like I did a live stream on my DNA, but anyway, she survived barely COVID, um, a big anti-vaxxer. And my, what I tell them if they care to interact with me is, mm -hmm. um, what are you an expert? I, I say, what do you, I ask them, what are you an expert on? And they'll tell me like, usually it's whatever they got their degree in or yeah, they have degrees. Um, and <laughs> whatever they studied for whatever, yeah. 20 years or what they do for a living. Yeah. And I'm like, how would you feel if I went up to you and I just told you ev everything that you know is wrong you can't trust anything that you've learned over the past 20 years. Hmm. This is what's really true. Yeah. You know, it's the same, like, you know, a plumber, an electrician, like any trade, especially that's a great yeah. thing to bring. Like, you don't, a plumber comes into your house. You're thankful that they fixed the, the damage to your pipes. You're not yeah. sitting there saying they're doing it all wrong. Cause you watched a couple of YouTube videos. And yeah. so I think that's yeah, exactly. the, yeah, that's my main point to all, all these folks is like, there's a you're going to go insane if you you think you're an expert on this stuff anyway. But what, why not just give some trust to people who earned it? You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there he is. There's Genie Vlogger right now. That's a check out Genie Vlogger. That's he he's been doing uh, episodes about my family tree. So and we're oh nice doing cool. a live stream next week. Um, yeah, no, totally. It's that, that I feel like that is a good way to go about it. And yeah, I mean, it is interesting. I mean, I've, I have, um, I have a family member who is very smart, um, has, I mean, you know, she's got a degree in 18th century British literature for God's sake. I mean, she is, you know, <laughs> she's got a head on her shoulders, you know, I mean, was a college <laughs> professor, you know, and, and yeah, and she, and she was a hippie for decades and now she is, you know, hard Trumper. Uh, she's one of those, you know, voted for Obama and then voted for Trump people. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, very, very skeptical about the vaccine. Um, you know, not, and it isn't, you know, microchips or any of the, you know, the, the, the absolute craziest stuff. Bill Gates. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, she just doesn't know what's in it and, uh, and, and has doubts about what's in it and, and has been spending too much time on websites and, and, uh, you know, that, that are stoking those doubts and, you know, but she's not a medical expert, but yeah, I mean, it is, it's the same, similar thing. It's like, she is, um, a, uh, she's a very smart, uh, person. I love her a lot, but yeah, it is. And it's kind of hard to, to talk to her about, and, you know, she's coming here for, yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it is, it's frustrating. Right. And, and it is, um, and it's it's hard to it's hard to navigate. I mean, I think I live in New Orleans, right, which is like uh, quite different. There's New Orleans and then there's Louisiana. Right. So yeah. it, it isn't exactly necessarily representative sample. Um, uh, New Orleans is, uh, I would say, you know, quite like not just liberal, but quite left wing uh, in a lot of ways. I mean, it's not, you know, uh, um, uh, certainly among young people. Uh, at the very least. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I mean, a lot of people are, are very COVID conscious here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, certainly you go out to Jeff Parrish, you know, to Plaquemines Parish, you go, you go outside the city and it is a whole different world. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is, it, it is a bit difficult, you know, and I, yeah, I mean, I've, I've certainly, I, I am a hundred percent with you, Matt, in that, you know, I am, um, uh, I, I am very, the, the worst thing in my mind is if I like, if I got it, I probably have gotten it at this point. Um, if I got it, I'm sure I would be completely fine. I'm not worried about myself getting it. I'm not worried about it. Even, you know, there's obviously the horror stories you hear of, of people losing their sense of smell or people having complications for months or years. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even think that would happen to me. And I'm not even worried about any of that stuff. What I am worried about is spreading it to other people. Uh, I'm vaxxed. So that gives me you know, certainly. And, you know, and oh my God, like two weeks after I got vaccinated, I got my second dose. 
we went to a dance party at the Broad Theater here in New Orleans in the Mid-City neighborhood. 200 beautiful, sexy young hipsters dancing. It was a blast. Oh, my God. It was such so cathartic. Yeah. Like it, it no. felt it happened, and then there was some doubt, and it was like, oh, God. But uh, Hey, I want to show this comment here. This person with the Confederate battle flag says, it's not the fact hey. that people have a problem with. The problem is the government telling you what to do and how to do it. No, that's not it. That's literally not it. Um, I'm sorry. I just had to put up this comment. This person doesn't know what they're talking It's Look, there's no mandate nationally. All the mandates are local. And if you're truly a libertarian type, then you'd be for localism. Localism is like, yeah. you don't want the feds. To, like, there's no federal mandate. Um, I disagreed with- If there was, I would oppose it. I know, few. yeah. In yeah. fact, I oppose President Biden's, um, you know, he did- The federal think, government? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had extreme reservations about that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think most Americans are- but like generally speaking, it's you're seeing it happen in the lo at the local level. Like the same, like yeah. when I went to, when I enrolled as a kindergartner, um, and at you know at the, my elementary school, my parents, I I wouldn't be able to go there unless I was vaccinated. Like for yeah. various, like um, yeah, of course, this is well, nothing think, new. Those yeah. of us who study history know this. This has been around for a while. Like these are, and and, and yeah, also exactly. if you know history about the corona. The, the, the coronavirus vaccine, it's not yeah. new either. Yeah, They've been no, developing no. it since 2003. So yeah, it's- there, Yeah, there's other coronaviruses that are known to us and that we've been studying for a while, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, no, I think, I mean, so uh, listen, Johnny Reb, um, you know, <laughs> obviously uh, uh, I, I feel like I know you in spirit, even if I don't know you personally, but uh, but listen, I mean, I, I, I get it, like I do. Um, uh, and, um, Here's kind of the thing, though, is that like, as far as like the government not telling you what to do, I agree. Like I, you know, there was that that tweet that Keith Oberman did where he got the booster shot and he was like yelling at anti-vaxxers being like, you idiots, I got the shot, get the shot, don't be a man. And, and like, and, and, and honestly, like my, my, my father-in-law, my girlfriend's dad uh, watches CNN all the time. And when we're at their house. You know, we're like up late and he's like, I'm going to put on Don Lemon and like, Ugh. and it's <laughs> torture. Like Don Lemon, <laughs> I hate him. So like, and, and yeah. just seeing him and Cuomo and their smug faces being like, what's up with these anti-vaxxers? Like they're yeah. doing more harm. They are. Than Marjorie Taylor Greene is by yeah. going on there with their smug faces and making such a huge deal out of this. Like I get it. I totally get it. Those, those yep. guys suck. And, um, and, and. And, and, you know, certainly people calling you stupid is not going to get you to actually do this thing. However, if we're coming at this from a perspective of individual freedom, uh, from a perspective of libertarian values, which I think, Matt, you and I both, I think this is something that a lot of people do not know about me, but I am, I have quite a strong libertarian streak. I know you do as well. Um, it, coming at it from a place of libertarian values, there is a flip side to freedom, which is responsibility. responsibility. Um, you cannot have freedom without responsibility. Um, there is a, if we were just sort of all out for ourselves doing our own thing, then any sort of society would collapse. We are social creatures. We are cooperative creatures. Uh, you need to have responsibility for the people around you. And you need to have responsibility to, to, at the very least, your local community. Like, again, we were talking about this earlier, like in terms of like how I was saying, like I would in a second, put my own personal loved ones and my family above my country. Um, and like a country is a very nebulous thing that doesn't actually exist, <laughs> but like your local community, your neighborhood, that's yeah. a tangible thing that exists, right? Like the, the ordinances of your neighborhood, the people's behavior in your neighborhood that affects your life in a huge way directly. And if you do not have a responsibility at the very least to those people, then you are doing freedom wrong. I'm sorry. You, that is not how freedom works. Um, either we are like, we can't all live in a bunker individually, you know, with our own stock of guns and canned food. Like that's just not mm -hmm. how like human beings can operate that way. It's just not the way our species operates. So like 
<laughs> you know, it, it's just, it's, it isn't, yes, your freedoms are important, but so is your responsibility to the people around you. And that's what it comes down to with the vaccine and with wearing a mask. It's just like, it is your responsibility to keep your neighbors safe. End Couldn't of the day. agree more. <laughs> I think this is the second super chat from this person. So I figured I better, um, they're worried about China. Uh, and I, I think um, as far as a future, do you think there's going to be a future Cold War II sequel? Oh, I, I think it may be a Cold War. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe a Cold War. I hope not a real war. I mean, and I, and I don't really think so. I don't know. I think real wars, at least I hope. Uh, I think like if things kind of keep going the way they're going, I think that that sort of big sort of like slug it out type of wars or might be a thing of the past. Um, like I don't think yeah. we'll see a World War II again. I think China and the United States depend on each other way too much. And I think yeah, it's going to be a very uh, under the, the like, I mean, cyber warfare, obviously, I think is the biggest threat yeah, in the totally. future. And yeah. uh, Savannah or Charleston for most beautiful city of the Southeast. Um, uh, the, the Both of them are the poor man's New Orleans. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say they... Yeah, but they, but they said southeast. Uh, so yeah, I guess we're the old southwest. Um, I love I love Charleston, man. I really do. Um, I love Charleston. It is my, uh, uh, Charleston is a great, great town. My former cooperating teacher when I student taught was from Savannah, so I'm biased towards Savannah. But the, yeah, they're both beautiful. Um, yeah. And yes, I'm hopeful for the future of the USA. We Damn, got a pirate this is, a question. For this is one of my questions. Are you uh, serious? Yeah, was was uh, are you hopeful for the future of America? That was going to be my closer, but oh well. Oh, I, when I said no, the word, about we can talk about when I when I said that word, uh, you know, S I R I, my computer thought I was asking it something. So sorry, <laughs> um, but yeah. So th is that? Could you just state your question then? And uh, my my question was, uh, are you hopeful for the future of America? Holy crap! Wow. Okay. Um, and so this, there's other parts of this too. We'll, we'll leave this up there. George's pirate <laughs> Georgism. That's a future video. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, I am, I am definitely hopeful. I'm one of the few, I think, uh, around me. Like I, I, I'm definitely surrounded. My friends and family tend to be more negative. Um, but I, there's a lot of things like, uh, even if you look back the last 20 years, like where we're going in the right direction, and I think it's most mostly social issues. I think overall society is is more open um, to other cultures, um, to you know whatever you want to be as an individual. Like as long as you're not hurting anyone else, I think we're as a society we've made a lot of progress. Like yeah. as far as live and let live mentality, um, yeah. you know we've seen that first and foremost with increased awareness of uh, LGBTQ plus issues of like the fact that that has made progress. We still have ways to go. Um, the fact that same sex marriage has been legal for several years now. I never thought I would see that as soon as I did. It's it yeah. Happened. Yeah. Deal. Like, um, you know, like criminal justice reform is actually happening. Um, it started under the Trump administration. Well, Obama kind of started it a little bit, but I, yeah. Uh, we're seeing like, you know, drug decriminalization. Um, and then also like just the fact that I know Congress isn't getting along right now. Like even Democrats aren't getting along in the Senate with the two holdouts of, uh, cinema and Man mansion, but, um, you're still seeing them talk about real things that need to be like the fact that they were, it was even on the table that, um, you know, families would get child uh, tax credits and mm -hmm. that um, expanding um, patern or maternity leave and even like putting on the table paternity leave. And yeah. um, the fact that our crumbling infrastructure is finally going to get, you know, like paid attention to. Like, uh, I remember watching on the TV when I, this is a very piv pivotal moment in my life where like this is in 2000 and. I think it was 2005 or six. It was right after like I got, got married. Actually, I got married pretty young, but um, when I was 13, not no. anyway, uh, <laughs> but no, like I remember seeing this, uh, like I was watching the Iraq war on one screen on the news. This is where I was like in a waiting room at a doctor's yeah. office 
there was the the Iraq war on on the on one TV, and then on another TV was um, it was like the aftermath of. Do you remember there was a bridge that collapsed in I thirty five in Minneapolis? Um, there was a bridge collapse around that time. I need to Google exactly when that happened. Uh, maybe someone in the chat can. Anyway, I was seeing those two things happen at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a. Uh, when? What year was that? Two thousand and seven. Yeah, August first, two thousand and seven. So that's when it okay. was. And I was seeing basically what I was seeing was like our country, like we had our military in Iraq, um, like rebuilding their infrastructure, and then on the other TV, we I saw our our <laughs> bridge collapsing, mm -hmm. and that that stood out to me. I was like, "What is happening here?" And it was very, it was a big reason why I like kind of had the foreign policy positions I did around that time. Sure. Like we yeah, need yeah. to. Yeah. And you think about it, the fact that um, we've we've we have made progress on this, and the fact that this bill presumably will pass, and it will it will have a real effect on tens of millions of us. Yeah. So, I, I mean, don't know. well, it's I mean, my uh, a buddy, a uh, really great uh, buddy of mine from one of my oldest friends in the world. Uh, it works in construction, and um, his uh, um, girlfriend's uh, father is an engineer and he likes to say that 90% of the bridges in America only stay up because of habit. <laughs> <laughs> and like, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be filming up on the, uh, uh, on the North shore of Lake Pontchartrain pretty soon going across the Pontchartrain, uh, um, bridge, you know, the longest, yeah. bridge the water. longest uh, in the world. Yeah. Longest in the world, baby. Uh, you know, that's post-World War II and, uh, has not been, fixed or maintained that much since. So, you know, it's wow. always a bit of a crapshoot, you know, is today going to be the day? Uh, yeah, yeah, you never really know. But yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of infrastructure, I mean, yeah, I mean, but so um, I guess as far as like uh, hopeful for America, I mean, I do, I think that we are in a very dark time. I think we are in a, I, I don't think it's, it's an exaggeration to say that this is a, that this is one of the darkest times in American history. Um, but I do think that we're going to be okay. And I think we're going to get through it. Uh, I do think that, that we came precariously close, um, last year. I really do. I, I think that if, if things had gone a little bit differently, then it would have been very, very bad. Um, but, uh, because it's sort of, yeah, it just kind of all, it was sort of, it, Ah, yeah. Anyway, but it, um, well, but I, so I think we kind of made it through. I think that I think we're we're out of the the worst part. Um, but yeah, and but I, I will say, you know, a lot of elements in American political discourse do like bother me and, and worry me like very much. Um, I don't think we're out of the woods, but I think that that we are away from the brink. Um, so I am generally pretty hopeful. Yeah. No. I, I guess I I was trying to spin it, but I we all have a negativity bias that I'm trying to fight. And clearly so, it's been a rough few years with the pandemic and with our divided, uh, our, just everything, like everything yeah. is a political issue. And that, um, yeah. So I, I think, uh, you're right. We were on the brink. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, my fifth question yes. for you, we're only halfway done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's we'll it four hours. It's what I'm, I'm having fun, you know. Actually, this is related all, as well. Um, okay. I said, what are the the most important political issues Americans? What? Wait. What are the most important political issues Americans should vote on? Like next year, 2022. What? What's the like? If you go to there, what what should be first and foremost in your mind when you make your vote? Oh God. Um... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a person to ask about this, Matt. I don't know. I'm. I'm not. Like I've got political opinions, but I don't feel like I. I'm. I'm necessarily an authority in a lot of this stuff. I. I, I do think that. I think that the that the a lot of the culture war stuff is really quite unimportant. <laughs> I agree. Strongly um, agree with that. <laughs> and uh, and I think that that the 
that the, the if we can sort of minimize that in our minds and just kind of understand it for the sort of bait that it is, in many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases, um, I, I think that like when it really comes down to it, I think we should be voting on um, economic issues and on uh, and and on sort of things that are directly going to affect our livelihoods and our well beings as as not super rich people, you know what I mean? Like, um, um, yeah. so, so yeah. So I think that there's like, I guess income inequality is the short answer, right? Like, I think there's like a profound gilded age esque income inequality in America that needs to be addressed. Um, that I feel like the culture war stuff is just a bit of a smoke screen for, and, um, uh, well, the people in power, change, you know, um, yeah, yeah. The, the people in power love the culture world. Oh, though. yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, without a freaking doubt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keeps us distracted and keep us hating each other. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the sort of, you know, and I kind of, and, uh, you know, you mentioned that I, I changed your mind about the Confederate monuments and I'm really glad that I did, but, uh, and that's super flattering, but I also like, culture I, don't, I don't, I don't look back at that video very fondly because I feel like it was a very explicitly political editorial piece about an issue that maybe doesn't matter at all. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. I, I think it's something that I was like well suited to address, but like Confederate monuments ultimately, like, I don't know. I feel like uh, in it the, matters. In the year, I've been like, who cares? You know, it's it, sort of like, but it, you're right. It matters, but it doesn't, it shouldn't matter as much. Like we should yeah. be seeing it breaking news on CNN, you know, like. Yeah, it inspires thing. such vitriol and it's yeah. like, why, you know, it, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the, I don't know, maybe the older I get, I just kind of, am not, you know, I've sort of wisened to that kind of stuff, but, um, but yeah, it's, that's issue. kind of a perfect, that's sort of a perfect example. And I do think, yeah. and I've like, and I, I maybe, you know, and against my better judgment, I, I got a little sort of worked up and I made this in a pinned comments on that, on that video talking about, uh, sort of retrospectively sort of the summer of 2020 and how that went. I do think that the whole mon monuments thing, was like a very convenient way last summer to divert the public discourse away from police brutality in a mm -hmm. way that felt really, really gross, you know, because it was like the protesters, they started going after um, monuments and stuff. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you know, Tucker Carlson realized, oh, you know, let's go after this. And and all of a sudden nobody was talking about cops agents of the state murdering people in broad daylight for no reason anymore and how maybe that shouldn't happen <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and all of a sudden it was like don't take down my george washington it was uh <laughs> yeah. i don't know yeah. i feel like it was a bit, of a, it was a bit of a smoke screen man. i feel like it was you know maybe i'll put on my tinfoil hat i think i think uh the, the the big wigs at fox news were like we have an opportunity here you know oh they're so good aren't they they're, they're really like they're great they're great I, in Love fact them. i was I was planning on a video about critical race theory and uh, well, well, for starters, a shout out to Sammy from us 101. He already did a video on it and I was a guest in his video and, but, and then I was going to make it and I was like, well, he did a good job. And then I was like, well, I could add this. But then the more I thought about it, like you said, like it's, I'm feeding into the culture war and it's yeah. not something we're going to even remember yeah. in a couple of years. So why should I even, feed into that yeah yeah exactly and i don't and i see so many other youtubers doing this so much and it, and it really angers me it's just like the, the transparently like youtubers who just transparently latch onto like the thing that's happening in order to get like views and ad revenue um, i get that clout yeah yeah i just i don't that stuff right and Neither i like you I've totally done it <laughs> but like well yeah we've all done it like i even with the confederate battle flag i that's Part of me was thinking, like, man, I need, I haven't had a video do well for a while. Maybe I should go ahead and do this now. But sure. yeah, like, then there's you who, like, with the witch finder stuff, you know, that's not going to immediately <laughs> yeah. be a smash hit, but you do it anyway, and it's all good. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, yeah, I, I've, I do, like, I am, like, I, I've been talking about, uh, I talked earlier about how I'm, I'm making a Civil War video right now, and it's very much like one for them, right? It's like, uh, it's, yeah. It, it's something where it's just like, you know, I need actually literally my landlord raised my rent. Uh, my, my lease was up and my landlord raised my rent pretty considerably. So like I need a little Jeez. extra cash. So 
yeah. I, you know, again, this is my job, you know, I'm not, and you know, I'm, 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 I'm going at it, you know, strong. I'm trying to make it the best video I can, but it's definitely not like what I necessarily want to be making right now, you know? And, but that's the thing is yeah. that if I did, you know, especially because I've got a, a, a narrative feature film that I've been, that I'm going to be shooting in the, uh, spring, which is taking up a lot of my time right now. Like I kind of feel like I'm in very much a Puritan mindset and I have been for a few months now, been sort of in that period of history. And like, if I'm not careful, I will just be the Puritan channel. And I don't want to necessarily do that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, know, you don't want to be too one note. Um, yeah. Uh, Nelson, just really quickly. I, I think it's, as it stands today, it's not perfect, but I think um, it's better than nothing. So uh, build back, back better plan. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not familiar with it actually. It's very long. Yeah. Most people haven't read it, even including members of Congress. Uh, what are your meet? What are the media influences you draw upon the most in your historiography? I know one of you uses age of empires two and Spyro for background music. That's allegedly, uh, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've never, I only use the music. Well, at the right actually, screen. let me ask my sixth question. Cause that's related to this. Um, okay. okay. My, Okay, what's um, you don't have to tell me that many, but um, what are your what are the best historical films and why? That because I know you did that big uh, that video like the top. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I, so the best historical films. Um, you know, that's uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a complex question, right? Because there is sort of the best historical films from a in terms of accuracy. There's best historical films in terms of entertainment. There's best historical films in terms of um, uh, what what I called in that video immersion, which meant uh, sort of it's it's sort of authentic. Maybe it's not accurate, but it sort of mm -hmm. feels real. Like it feels tactile. You know, it feels like it kind of transports you to a different yeah, world. Um, yeah, I want to make sure I want to I'm going to pull up the the video here because uh you it was the top 10 most immersive historical yeah. movies, right? So that's a little bit different than like than the most accurate, yeah. There I am in my in-laws basement. To... Oh, I didn't like <laughs> this one yet. Okay. Um, um yeah. So how many views? Wow, shit. Let me freeze frame you. That's a lot of views. Um, oh, there you go. Look at that smile. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so just some of the, uh, video, the, the movies that I shouted out in this video, uh, my top three were, um, God, what were my top three? It was a quest for fire, uh, which is a, um, prehistoric film, uh, about Neanderthals with no mm -hmm. audible dialogue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just, it's <laughs> like, it's just that. Yeah. And it's amazing. Um, my number two was Come and See, which is a, uh, a, a, a Soviet film about uh, the German invasion of Russia, of, uh, of Belarus, more specifically, uh, in World War II, uh, which uh, a bunch of people gave me crap for saying that it was a Soviet propaganda piece and saying, like, that's not how it happened because it's a Soviet movie and they're just exaggerating German war crimes. Yes. no. The Soviet government tried to censor "Come and See," guys. Like mm. this movie was uh, the, the Soviets tried to censor this movie. Um, and as far as uh, you know, yeah, it, it it is it is pretty accurate. And then my number one was, of course, Barry Lyndon. Uh, we're seeing uh, uh, ah. uh, shots of now uh, by Stanley Kubrick. Um, yeah, Barry Lyndon is is uh, yeah absolutely a outstanding movie. movie. Um, yeah. It's just like poetic, painterly absolutely amazing um and i think that is uh, probably because and actually somebody in the chat mentioned rome uh and i did actually want to talk about that that's the first thing i thought of when you um um when uh, uh when when you first brought this up matt was like rome i feel like is kind of almost like the best of both worlds like it's it is a very accurate it's accurate enough. Like, right. It's, you know, even Shakespeare in his history plays was like screwing around with history a little bit. Like you can't make stuff. If it's about real people and real events, you cannot make it completely accurate. You just can't. It's mm -hmm. just real. The real world does not have the same narrative structure that like movies and plays and novels and shows should have. Um, but, uh, but I think Rome is like an absolutely outstanding 
example of cinematic historical fiction. It really places you in that world, like the sets, the costumes were all painstakingly authentic. And, um, uh, and, and it, just, it just really transports you to that time and really gives you a very solid sense of what it would be like to be a Roman, you know, to, in, in the late Republic. Um, and, and also just incredibly entertaining and just has all the uh, amazing sex, violence, and sleaze of uh, mid-2000s HBO shows, um, <laughs> which uh, sadly is lacking in so many shows these days. But uh, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I would, I mean, Rome is is a for sure, like, you know, I mean, if, if anybody, I assume people who are watching this stream, you're into history. If you haven't seen Rome yet, what the heck are you doing? It's on HBO Max. You know, you got to check it out. Just yeah. two seasons of pure awesome. It was only two seasons. Okay. Only two seasons because it was so expensive um, yeah. that HBO was like, we can't shoulder this burden anymore, you know, and it was before it was getting like Game of Thrones numbers, you know, it just like, wasn't yeah, anymore, you know, I've yeah. always loved HBO. I, I always appreciate yeah. how they, yeah, just get an HBO Max subscription. There's so yeah, much yeah. on that. Anyway, not a sponsored thing. Well, actually, uh, I have a kind of a related question to that. Okay. It's just something that I, I feel like tells a lot about, uh, says a lot about a person. Um, and again, I'm kind of going completely out of order here, but, uh, what's your favorite TV show of all time? Well, it was on HBO from approximately 2001 to 2007. And that was the wire. Oh, the wire. Uh, oh, okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, one of the uh, creators nice, of nice. that show did another show called Treme, which was based in new Orleans. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the wire is based in Baltimore and I have the box set behind me. Oh, nice. Next to John F. Kennedy. Oh, oh, good. I wasn't wearing pajama pants. I'm always worried about that when I get up into the slash. Oh, I, I totally am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So nice. um, this is the greatest show of all time. Breaking Bad is my close second. Yeah, um, I was gonna say Breaking Bad is is my is my favorite of all time. Have you seen The Wire? Uh, you know, I have not seen it all the way through. I, uh, I have I've given it several uh, attempts. I've been told my entire adult life that it's the best thing ever. And, and I saw like the first season and I was told it's like, you know, the first season, it's like not, it doesn't kind of really get going until like the second or third. Uh, but for whatever reason, I just like kind of fell off of it. But that yeah. and the Sopranos are like my two gigantic blind spots when it comes to TV uh, where I've like, I saw the first two seasons of the Sopranos and then just fell off, even though it was like amazing. Um, but I, I still haven't finished that one. Well, um um, my good friend, Dan, uh, I, I watched it a second time and he watched it the first time with me and we like made it true. Now he's forcing me to watch game of Thrones. And I'm only on season two of game of Thrones. I <laughs> embarrassing for me to say, wow. Okay. So you're um, yeah. like new to game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Temper your um, expectations. I hear it. Yeah. I hear it kind of get ready uh, for season yeah. seven and eight. <laughs> yeah. Last two. Because they're not yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, you know, I think they're timeless regardless. Like, even The Wire, where you can see outdated technology, like, um, yeah. it's still, like, it's amazing how many of those issues are still incredibly <laughs> relevant, oh, yeah. sadly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and yeah. Treme actually did, like, a, uh, you know, Treme was, I mean, honestly, to be perfectly honest with you, Matt, like, I, most of the reason that I, like, made it through that show was because, every scene it was like oh like i just recognized <laughs> restaurants that i eat at you know what i mean uh, uh, because but it is like a very good uh picture of like post cave new orleans life um yeah. yeah yeah it is like it's it's quite accurate and and yeah it's like very well done um but yeah anyway uh yeah whoever said barry linden is amazing you're dante it is amazing thank you dante you well stanley time. kubrick is basically my favorite director of all time yeah, i mean i it's you can't get much better than than him for sure uh yeah my a buddy and uh, my buddy and i watched uh watched the shining again for a little halloween uh, screening yeah and, man what a what a freaking classic i mean just the bathroom scene and and just so you know. <laughs> yeah just like it almost seems like there he just captures something that's like always otherworldly it's like you're yeah. where are we like i don't know it's hard to describe but it's like um it's so much about the the mood and the environment 
in his yeah. movies. Like he did, the story is kind of secondary to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure, absolutely. So, but but you said Breaking Bad is your second favorite show of all time. Uh, yeah. So did you were you at were you uh, watching Break ba Breaking Bad from the beginning? Or no, like, well, oh. kind of. It like I started watching it regularly when I like on Netflix. So I was always like a season behind until like the yeah. last season. Then I was like, I gotta watch it somehow. Sneak, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the ending together with somebody. But yeah, it's the ending. The way they ended that show, I think, was perfect. Like it's yeah, hard to end a, a show. Period. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway. Yeah. No. It, yeah. It, it's it's it is. I think my number one show of all time. Uh, oh, really? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's. Awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean, it definitely. And it, it was it very much defined. I feel like my my college experience because I was all, all the meth. Yeah. All the meth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. So so you know it 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 started coming out in two thousand eight and. Uh, it, it stopped in, in 2013. Right. So I basically yeah. got into it maybe in like 2010 when like the first couple of seasons hit Netflix and uh, my buddy Bryce and I would just like watch the whole, like all everything that was on Netflix and bring bad in like a night, we like stayed up all night and watched it on like a laptop. Um, really? But yeah. And then like, it became a very, yeah, it just became like a very important part of, of, of my, my college experience. And like it ended in 2013, which was the year I graduated college. And, um, uh, and yeah, I mean that, that last season in particular, like, um, it was, uh, no, Stefan, shut up. <laughs> hey, Stefan, good to see you here. <laughs> no, it was not Stefan. And I will not hear any of that talk. <laughs> I have that theory. theory too. The, the fan um, theory is to get out of control. Yeah, yeah, no, but um, uh, no, but I think it was. Uh, um, yeah, so so I just I have very strong associations with like a certain period in my life, a uh, very sort of uh, a period in my life that like kind of defined me in many ways and kind of defined the tra trajectory of my life. You know, like Breaking Bad yeah. ended in October of 2013, and then november of 2013 i was like driving down here to new orleans right so it was like very it, it, it i don't know it's a very kind of crucial part of my development and also just like as a you know know what to say is without sounding pretentious but whatever i'm a pretentious guy uh <laughs> it's sort of like my development as a filmmaker i feel like was was very much influenced by that and um and we had a uh, in in senior year of film school uh, i had a web series called sergeant pickle which is still on youtube <laughs> <laughs> um which uh is 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 kind of uh honestly sort of very frozen 50s man-esque in that it's about like a, a wildly incompetent detective um and every episode was kind of a spoof of a different thing and we sort of make um, my, my friends and i we were very disillusioned with our film school um uh, the university of north carolina school of the arts which uh uh, presents itself as one of the top film schools in the country, but actually sucks. It's a bad school. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't wait for them to invite me to uh, talk at one of their screenings <laughs> so say that to their smug faces. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they um, uh, let's just say that I had, um, you know, I'm me and I am a caustic, spastic person um and i had certain ideas of the sorts of movies that i wanted to make and they did not think that it fit with their brand uh as a school um because of the sort of shockingly ultra violent stuff that i wanted to make uh but anyway i can't find it i don't think well, well they do full word sergeant sergeant pickle um oh gosh how do you spell that sergeant Sar sargento pickle um and i, I i'm sure it'll there it is, Sergeant Pickle oh, wow. episode one, um, and uh, my very old YouTube channel, um, which I, I, uh, yeah, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so every they got this first one was like very stupid. It was like me and my friends making a little movie like at night, three beers in, and then they steadily got more elaborate, and uh, and we sort of spoofed whatever we were watching that particular week, um, and Sergeant Pickle played by my my good friend Moet here. Um, wildly incompetent, a huge coward, um, uh, very bad at his job. As you can see, he hands his gun to a criminal who then shoots <laughs> oh, him. Oh gosh. 
Um, and uh, and he's also addicted to Windex. Uh, Windex is his drink of choice, Ooh. Uh, and he drinks it quite a bit. And um, uh, and there's an intervention about his Windex drinking. It's a whole world building. You know, it's a whole. It's a whole. Okay, well, but uh, <laughs> and I'm probably case, gonna get uh, uh, yeah. But there was a lot of like now. Thank you. Know, you. I was watching a lot of like. Uh, um, I was watching a lot of TV, a lot of Breaking Bad, a lot of prestige television, and that, and we sort of like spoofed that in the little movies that we made in in film school. And so, yeah, it was a very like important part of my life. Um, and it's also <laughs> well, I do have a anyway. My, my I'm sorry, I'm actually, rambling. We no, my next question is related. It, this is working out perfectly. Our flow and like transitions yeah. because it's just simply what like I know you were raised in New England, but. I never knew exactly what led you down to Louisiana, down to the bayou. I, well, how did you? So you said you 2013 is when you moved down there, but why? Yeah, well, it was uh, tw um, yes, I think it was 2014 actually. Maybe I was mistaken, but um, oh. so um, um, so yeah, basically, I mean, I went to, I grew up in New England. I feel like I had a very, um, I had a very small town. Out of, you know, a childhood, right? So uh, we lived in Waltham, Massachusetts, which is a little bit more cosmopolitan, a little bit more sort of urban. It's like a more direct kind of suburb to Boston. And uh, and then when I was uh, like a little kid, like six or seven, we moved to Wayland, Massachusetts, which is kind of an exurb. It's sort of a, um, it's, it's very kind of leafy and upper middle class and stuff. And, uh, um, but it is very much kind of a small town. And once you sort of, when you're in kind of Eastern Massachusetts, once you cross I-95, then you kind of go from like the more sort of uh, concentrated suburbs around Boston to like the exurbs and it becomes, and it gets, and it isn't like rural life. Like it'd be a stretch to call it like a rural sort of existence, but it is, um, cause it's still very much in Boston's orbit, but it is very small town, right? Just the feeling mm -hmm. is like very small town and it does have that, feeling of like Puritan congregationalism and everybody's in everybody else's business. And, you know, it's, it's still, it's that 400 year old, it's, it's the ghost of the Puritans. They're still walking around, man, in Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, they're still very much there. So, um, so I feel like I had, I never feel like I necessarily fit in to, I love, look, I love Massachusetts. Uh, it is a key part of who I am and my personality and my upbringing. And, uh, and I miss it. I do, but I never really felt at home there. I never really felt like it was my people. I never felt like it was my tribe. Um, and, uh, and, and essentially I, when I was applying for college, I got into two schools. I got rejected by a lot of people. My, I was a bad student. My grades were bad, but I got accepted by two colleges. Emerson and uh, UNCSA, the North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And, um, uh, and you know, I was like uh, a lover of Westerns and a lover of Civil War stuff and, and felt like I was kind of like in the, you know, sort of sissy, liberal kind of orbits of of ooh race relations ooh kale oh, interesting. sort of environment right <laughs> kale, kale. Uh, where, and I kind of <laughs> wanted to like see the real America you know so I so I went down to North Carolina and uh, of course in retrospect it's like I went to film school like real America give me a, give me a freaking break <laughs> uh, you know uh, there's a bunch of artsy kids just that like, is real America but, but no yeah but like I did want to go to like I wanted to like experience a different culture I wanted to experience a different way of life and I feel like I've I um and kind of what it came down to uh and, and you know sort of and I think that was the right decision like I met film school is a ripoff just everybody should know this film school is is an absolute uh, racket, but I'm, I met amazing people there and I met lifelong friends and lifelong like collaborators. My, uh, buddy Eduardo, who has been on the channel a couple of times, he was in frozen fifties, man. He was the coroner who was chopping up bodies. Um, and mm -hmm. he, he was a cinematographer of, of that and the cinematographer of many things on the channel. He's been helping me film checkmate Lincolnites. Like he is, you know, kind of the man behind the curtain in a lot of ways. We co-directed our feature film alien baby together. 
Um, he's still here in New Orleans and he, and there was basically a lot of friends from school, like dear friends from school who were just for whatever reason, well, the film migrated down here to New Orleans. Isn't the film so, industry pretty big there? It, yeah, it is. Um, so production is big. So like a lot of people shoot things here. Mm. Um, but as far as like pre-production, like as far as like development and, and, and like writing and producing and editing, like that stuff's in LA. So like um, we, yeah. us in Georgia and Atlanta and Atlanta kind of stole our thunder. Um, yeah. Um, because when I first moved here, New Orleans was like the exciting place to be for young filmmakers. And then Atlanta, you know, had great tax breaks and now everybody shoots in Atlanta. But, uh, but yeah, basically I came here because my friends were here. Right. And, and also because I was like living at home and I didn't know what to do. And I was like, you know, a sack of crap and, you know, didn't, yeah, I was just like, <laughs> Had no job, no prospects. So I was like, oh, I might as well go to New Orleans. Uh, it was kind of a kind of go west young man type of scenario, you know, the uh, the landless mm -hmm. second son. Um, so uh, so yeah, that was kind of the reason. And and I do, and honestly, I I I feel I do miss Massachusetts. I do miss it a lot, uh, especially during the summer here, because New Orleans summers are like New England winters. They're miserable. I hate. Yeah. Like today, it was like 66 degrees for the first time in six months. It was like, oh, oh it was amazing. <laughs> um, but uh, but but uh, uh, I I feel like I just, in terms of my personality, I just like don't belong up there. You know what I mean? And I think like yeah. here, I just feel like it's nobody here says, oh, what do you do? You know, nobody here is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people here, yeah. they're, they're just they're so much more laid back, and they're so much more grounded and they're so much more present in the moment and and it's just not uh and you know there's problems with this city big problems but i i i find that just in terms of my personality it's just it's just so much it's a much better fit you know well good yeah that's cool it's an enchanting place i haven't this been there a very before. enchanting place <laughs> uh for freaking sure um listen i might uh run to uh the bathroom matt okay uh, but I will, I will return. Could you, right. uh, could you hold down the fort for me? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, yeah, I'll ramble here. And people uh, can see my, uh, my, my pajama pants. <laughs> yeah, it's a great ensemble there for the runway. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, for those of you uh, wondering, I'm not going to release a new video on my, on this channel tomorrow, like I normally do on Fridays, but I'm releasing a new video on my other channel. The Beat Goes On. Some of you don't know about that one. It's a, a pop culture history channel. So uh, I'm releasing a video about Rage Against the Machine tomorrow. So you can look forward to that on that other channel. And, uh, oh, this is actually to both of us, so I'll make sure I share it with them. But Sebastian says, hi, guys. First off, big fan of both your channels. Second, do you guys know? Any books that could help me get insight on immigration and what it even means to be an American asking as a first gen American. Interesting. Wow. Um, you could get my book, a guy, the president, <laughs> the ultimate American presidential election book. Um, well, that's no, that's a bad recommendation. Um, I would say, I don't know if books are necessarily like the only way to go with that like i would say the you know like um you might have better you know luck with looking at um you know local zines like i some of the best things i read are like my the city where i live has a, a local zine that i i get that and there's a local paper that's online only that you know like that's how you finally that's how you really get a good grasp of what's going on in your community. Watching the local news. That's where there's actual reporting going on. Just don't watch national stuff. And uh, the question was uh, any, uh, any books that can give them a better insight. There's a, there are first gen American oh better insight on immigration, what it means to be an American. I don't know. That's a tough question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, I'm I'm second generation, so uh, on my mom's oh. side, at the very least. So it's, uh, huh. um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, th I you know, if wait, you, where's your mom from? Uh, well, my mom is. Um, uh, she was born in Chicago, but uh, her her first language is Serbian, and uh, oh. her family is very strongly Serbian. 
Uh, it's it's where I get my dashing Mediterranean good looks. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, so yeah, so so yeah, my my mom's side of the family is super Serbian. Um, my grandmother, uh, my baba, who um, uh, passed away uh, in 2019, she was born in Philadelphia. She was um, deported back to Serbia. And then uh, just in time for the big showdown, uh, just in time for, for the war. And, uh, and then later uh, immigrated with, uh, with my dada, with, um, uh, with my grandfather um, uh, to Chicago. So, so there, you know, and, and they, you know, my mom's first language, she was born in Chicago, but her first language is Serbian. There were siblings born in, in, uh, in Croatia. They were Croatian Serbs. So um, yeah, I mean that was definitely something that they that they that they struggled with, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean it's um, I, I don't think anybody can necessarily tell you what it means to be American, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's one of like, those. If you're here, parts. you know, as far as I'm concerned, at least, okay. like if you're here, you're you're American. Yeah, I I don't, Jason. I know you're. This is a generous super chat here. I don't know. Oh wow, that is generous. I didn't. That's I don't know about this <laughs> i'm pardon my ignorance you know about this removing the confederate battle flag from the georgia state flag replacing it with a stars and bars the actual was exactly. successful at killing the culture war fight in georgia over the flag issue um, you know i'm not i'm not super familiar actually with that with what you're talking about there jason I, I don't know precisely what you're referring to that's interesting though that um that they if that is true like that is interesting that they would do that actually i like on my YouTube merch store. Like I, I, you know, I have my checkmate Lincolnites merch mm -hmm. and normally in, in the actual shows, um, it's, you know, the, the modern American flag, just cause that's the one that I had sitting around. When nobody was watching my channel and the sort of, uh, uh, you know, kind of classic, you know, Confederate battle flag, the Naval Jack, you know, whatever you want to call it, the, the racist one <laughs> that we all know and love. Uh, that, that that's kind of on the other side on Johnny Reb's side again because just I happen to have that flag around. Um, mm. But uh, but I but in the the merch that I did and, and when I um, uh, enlisted a buddy of mine to make art for it, I was like, do the 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 real first Confederate flag because I wouldn't feel comfortable selling a hate symbol. You're right, right? That that would just be like weird. I wouldn't feel comfortable selling a hate symbol. So like do the 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 original Confederate flag that or you know what's sometimes referred to as the as the stars and bars. Um, but it is interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, it should be just as offensive, but it doesn't have sort of the history to it, right? Because I feel like the 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 sort of battle flag has sort of an associated history with the Klan and with like anti civil rights movements and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I I don't understand. You know, I don't know why it okay. would, but I, I can see like emotion from an yeah. emotional perspective. I can see why why it would be less controversial because it's not as charged. You know, I guess I misunderstood the people question. don't know what the original Stars and Bars Confederate flag is. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, you're right that um, I agree entirely. I, I guess I didn't understand the question, but yeah, like the original um, Confederate flag, the, the actual flag of the country um, wasn't later co opted by white supremacists and yeah. um, uh, segregationists. So that's the simple yeah. answer. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just like the, the swastika used to be a, harmless religious symbol um and it was co-opted yeah <laughs> all right uh you're it's your turn for a question oh it is okay yeah when we're almost done we've been all at this at two hours and 17 minutes so i think should i prioritize my juiciest questions well we'll just we'll just speed it up here for the, the last okay. few. yeah so we can get um, some 99 all right <laughs> uh, capitalism yes or no uh yeah i mean i i no, no system is perfect, um, but generally I, I am pro-capitalist, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but, um, you know, I've, I've taught economics for many years, and um, I've been called a nasty neoliberal numerous times <laughs> on Twitter, especially. Yeah, Twitter. <laughs> so I guess yeah, yeah. maybe they are oh worried. Oh, how, how shocking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I generally, um, you know, like... I went through my uh, <laughs> Milton Friedman stage, you know, like, um, and the Austrian school, like, um, so 
I believe in markets. Now, the older I've gotten, the more I realize that markets um, <laughs> can definitely have unintended consequences. And uh, it's funny to me because people will talk trash all the time on uh, socialism, which they assume is the opposite of capitalism. But I don't think that's true at all. Like it's it's not really opposite. It's just something that's separate, yeah. you know, like, um, and you know, I made a whole video about th this, the difference between capitalism, socialism, and communism and why I think they're yeah, actually yeah. terms we shouldn't even use because yeah. they become meaningless because no one knows the definition or has the same definition anymore. So I, yeah. I generally, uh, will say, um, how much intervention should there be with government in an economy? So, um, I think almost everyone in the entire world thinks that we should have some kind of mixed economy where the government steps in for certain public goods and yeah. services and stays off, like, laissez faire for others. And if we all just talked about economics in terms like that, I think it'd be more boring. It might turn people away from it, but at the same time, it would be more productive conversations. Yeah. And so when we talk about Denmark and we learn from, we learn about why it's going so well in Denmark on so many metrics compared to the United States. Um, it's, it's not because, well, like Bernie Sanders says, it's just like, well, because they're socialists, you know, like we, it's because actually they, um, they have a different type of capitalism yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. mostly that there's just a bigger safety net. And yeah. And, and even Bernie Sanders like doesn't advocate for socialism. Like, no, he right, doesn't. I mean, He's just bad yeah. at, marketing like he was yeah like, yeah he even brought up the word socialism ever i think was a bad I know, idea right? i know i know yeah, yeah. um it's, yeah yeah it's not good like dude um, you're a capitalist you you have two homes like that's yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's not even and he's not yeah yeah no you're you're right you're right i mean it's democratic a socialist term. is like yeah they're just uh you know, you know yeah it's just red flags yeah um to to a lot of the you know i mean it's the cold war was not that long ago you know what i mean it's uh it was not that long ago we were dealing with a very hostile very repressive marxist leninist state i still see um, so much red baiting going on though it's oh sick. my god it's, it's insane. sad it's insane it is very it's, it's effective it's still like um, people people like if you're watching this right now 359 people still with us um you i love need all 359 learn what these definitions mean like you're, if someone just goes up to you and says socialism is bad, it's never worked. It always leads to authoritarianism. That person doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah, no, you're not. You're not. Having, you're not going to have a productive conversation with them. Maybe send them a link to my video and say, "Okay, we'll talk later." <laughs> I love you, man. I love you, cousin um, Joe. Joe, you're my favorite cousin. But watch Mr. Beat's video. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Have a conversation yeah. about how much government intervention should be in the economy. You know. Per, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think, uh, so I think like it's, I mean, again, right. It's, it's what I was saying earlier about like when you know history, you're cursed with <laughs> this idea of like, yeah. it could be so much worse. Uh, and yet it could also be so much better. Right. So, um, uh, and history has shown that it can get better. So it's like, as far as I, I think uh, from my perspective, I think my short answer is no. Um, but there's a very long answer. And the very long answer is uh, feudalism was really bad. Yeah, yeah. Feudalism was just the worst. Uh, and, <laughs> and like, and, and, you know, and feudalism lasted for, let's see, fifth century AD to, you know, Long the 17th, 18th century AD. That's a long time. <laughs> and that's that's a very long time. And then we started to and then capitalism started to emerge and it emerged slowly and now it's the thing. And and I think that like I don't think that capitalism is going to last forever and I don't think that it's a good system and I think that it originated and I think that it's its history is pretty sorted. I mean obviously it it the history of capitalism is is pretty much um uh tied pretty inexorably to colonialism and genocide. And I mean, it's, it's a sordid yeah. history, right? And, it's and obviously um, there is a concentration of wealth at the very, very top, you know, but to be fair, that also happened with feudalism, right? It was, it was even worse with feudalism. So yeah. um, I, I think that like, 
I don't, you'll never, I don't think you'll ever see me sort of say that capitalism is good or ever say like, you know what, I'll defend capital. Like I'm never going to hoist my shield in defense of capitalism. Uh, but I am very skeptical of, uh, and somebody was talking about bread tube in the, in the chats, uh, speaking of bread tube contrapoints, uh, uh, the one, the only, um, I uh, had a great video in the wake of the uh, 2020 election about voting where she was sort of uh, had this sort of uh, James the first demonology dialogue between herself and an imaginary Twitter uh, Marxist Leninist. Uh, and it was basically made the great point where it was like, listen, like it's just like capitalism is a world economic system. And when people on Twitter are like, we're going to smash capitalism, it's like, OK, but like how? <laughs> It's like shooting what, your what does foot. that mean? Like, what are you, what, what's the, what's the, what, what was the plan here? You know? And, and yeah. I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty like, like idealistically I'm with you practically, I guess I don't see how that's going to happen in our lifetimes. Um, and I will say, and this isn't something, I don't know. I'm going to like allude to this in a really crappy, like kind of uh, to be, crude blue ball kind of way. But I will say that like recently, like this year, 2021, I, I kind of recently sort of got, became very passionate about a certain issue that made me very much that I kind of, once I sort of thought through logically, it sort of made me much more anti-capitalist. Um, so I think I'm a lot less favorably disposed to it than I was in like much of my in, throughout much of my life. But even, but that even said, I think I'm going to die in a capitalist society, you know, and I don't think that there's any point in sort of like pretending that we're not, you know, it's like, this is the the society that we have. And if we're not going to work in within it, then we're just mm -hmm. living in a dream world. Like, I'm sorry. It's just like, you know, if you're going to agitate for political causes, like you have to understand the world that you're living in. And if you're, you know, the Twitter, Twitter echo chamber is not the real world. Like, I'm sorry. Like, and if you want to be taken, if you want to actually like make change, then you have to be like working in this capitalist system and it sucks. And I don't want to, I, I wish I weren't that way, but it is. And um, yeah. But I think the, I don't know. the thing that people forget is we have more power than we really realize a lot of times. Like we don't, a lot of us are privileged enough where we don't have to shop at Walmart, for example, like and we also don't have to like, I think something that no matter where you're at on the political spectrum, we can all agree that corporate welfare is pretty, pretty rotten. Yeah. And if we end corporate welfare, like a big reason why capitalism doesn't work is because p powerful people and corporations and organizations, they are able to manipulate it and basically get laws passed and or laws enforced that favor them. You know, the classic example that many libertarians will argue like, well, if you are a mom and pop shop trying to make it um, then and a government passes a new law that makes it harder to do business, the corporation can absorb the costs. And they're glad that the government passed that laws because it hurts mom and pop who cannot absorb the, the loss or the, the costs. You know, does that make sense? Like essentially. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I mean, I, so there's yeah, things no, that we can do to, I, I guess, like, yeah, it frustrates me because like you said, like we could be pragmatic about it. And there's a perfect example. That's something that almost everybody will agree with. Yeah. Let's, let's just do that first. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And well, and it's like, and there's, I think there's a, and I think a lot of this is uh, maybe, I mean, again, we're, we're both on Twitter too much and, and maybe this is kind of coloring our view of everything. But I think a lot of what I see, excuse me, on Twitter is this is is a rejection of any uh, welfareist sort of ideas, right? About like you know, there's sort of like um, uh, I think a lot of people, a surprising amount of people, can agree on an end goal, right? An, an end goal for society, an end goal for civil rights, for humanity. Mm -hmm. We all want that Star Trek future, right? Like there's very few. <laughs> Like the people who don't want that Star Trek future are not to be taken seriously. Like everybody wants that. Yeah. Or we just disagree about how to get there. And like, and and uh, I feel like a lot of sort of the more radical elements 
uh, certainly you see it on Twitter a lot, you know, where, where they just like outright reject any uh, welfareist or like, or, or sort of half measures, I guess. And I, yeah. and like, I, I get it. it. Half measures are not punk rock. Right. You know, it, compromise is not punk rock. Mm. Um, it's also kind of how we do democracy. <laughs> like, you know, and, 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 uh, and though I've kind of soured on capitalism recently, you will never sour me on democracy and America <laughs> and our beautiful constitution and our beautiful decoration. You know, I am like, you know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm weird about how much I love the constitution and, and, <laughs> and like, ah, the enlightenment, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm weird about that. And, and you just, it's, it's that stuff is, those were good ideas, man. Those were good ideas. And, and you kind of like, yes, yes, yeah. I say, based and not cringe. Um, so, uh, <laughs> As uh, as somebody just said democracy is uh cringe and they are very wrong um uh, oh gosh yeah democracy is the best uh, well they, they probably don't even know the definition of a republic is which a republic is uh, it's essentially yeah. a representative so, so, democracy. yeah exactly and it is and it is like compromises you know it's it, you know it, it, do i do you know i i don't want people to anyway i'll shut up uh well, this gonna, question i put this one up because it's related to one of mine so i figured hey um they ask Jonathan, any advice for one of the YouTubers, but this is actually not the first part there, like the second part. How do you all feel about the current state of the history discipline? Like is Prager you hurting academia too much? And my question was like, what kind of was a precursor to Prager you, of course, was the history channel. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid, but history channel, like maybe when you were a kid played some, um, you know, Hitler stuff, Hitler. Nazi yeah. Germany stuff. Yeah. But then it just turned into ice road truckers and pawn stars and uh, shout out to central story and his dad was on there. Um, but yeah, if you, my question is if you were in a room with these history channel executives um, today, what would you say to them? Or what would you say to Prager you folks too, I guess, while we're at it? <laughs> I mean, well, I, the history channel executives, I don't think I would say anything to them because I know that like, it's very clear that, and again, capitalism, <laughs> like they are making, they're trying to make money. Like that, their pivot to reality TV was entirely a bid to make money. Um, it, it, and it is, they, they, they put the welfare of society aside and they figured what's going to get the most eyes on this and the most eyes is is pseudoscience and reality tv and that's mm -hmm. what they went with. i have nothing to say to that um and i don't think there's anything that i could say that would affect those people in any way um i think if i could talk to the prager you people um i would uh say many choice words um <laughs> Uh, none of which are appropriate for for this live stream. Um, no, I, I think I would. I am like, I don't know. I'm a very, as I've said a couple times, I'm a very caustic guy, uh, and um, and and that is a situation where I would be a gigantic jerkwad and and just be very rude and and uh, and and would not. I would just. I would. Um, yeah, I, I would not. I would not say anything constructive to those people. I would just insult them. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, that's just well, my own anger, and I don't think I could change their mind. Let's spend this on the positive because they also asked, like, if they like, and somebody else asked this too, like, how do I get where I find this here? Like, how do I get started making um, YouTube videos about history? Wait, yeah, like this one. How do you go about starting a video? You mean, um, like, if somebody wants to do what we do. What's your advice to them? Because we need more folks like us making history videos. Clearly, there's a lot of history sure. that's not being covered. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I, I actually have a whole video about this. Uh, At the wolf, I see you, and uh, I'm so glad that you love drunk me talking about democracy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I think uh, I, I yeah I have a video about um, being. Uh, ooh, I like this uh, this comment. Um, <laughs> I have a whole video about getting started on YouTube and doing YouTube stuff. 
um, called So You Want to Be a YouTuber. Um, uh, and yeah, a bunch yeah. of awesome history tubers are on Our that. Uh, yeah. I know you've seen it, I, uh, uh, Matt, but um, uh, that that'll, that kind of has a lot of what I have to say in it. Uh, and the, um, the, the, the babble or Blinkist ad in that is one of my favorite uh, things I've ever put on the channel. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think, I, I think if you want to do uh, YouTube videos, you know, I mean, just keep in mind that like the algorithm loves consistency. So make a video at least start every once a week. Um, titles and thumbnails are super important uh, because at the end of the day, you know, and this is not the way that the world should work, but the way the world it does work is that like it wants eyeballs, right? So eyeballs, views, and like the best way to get that is clickbaity um, titles and and visually appealing thumbnails, right? So visually appealing thumbnails usually means that there's like some sort of human figure, a face. The human eye is is drawn to faces. Also means that there's a lot of contrast, right, in terms of the colors. So, you know, if you have like kind of a sort of a bluish or sort of like a, a, a cooler colors in your image of the thumbnail, then the text should be warmer colors, that kind of thing. So basically you got to make it pop and, and, and post videos every week or once a month or just with consistency. The algorithm really likes that. Um, uh, and that's probably the best advice I could give for somebody who's just trying to get used to, who's trying to get into this generally. If you want to make history uh, videos, I would, um, uh, totally recommend doing non-military history yeah. um, <laughs> type of stuff, right? So like not World War II, not the Civil War, not the stuff that everybody likes, um, you know, and, and just kind of find, um, I mean, honestly, I think the, the, the most important thing is to do stuff that you're passionate about, right? If you're passionate about it, then that'll come through um, and, and it'll just naturally make it better. You know, it just will. It'll just be... Um, uh, if you're doing something that you really want to do, cause initially this is going to be a hobby. And if you are lucky enough, to, like me and Matt are to do it as a, as a job, you know, it's going to take years to get there if you even get there at all. So, um, so just make sure that it's something that you have something to say and that you're passionate about. Cause that's super important. Um, anyway, um, so somebody said, uh, um, I do not take bubblegum gun, who I think I, I, I is an old face on my channel. Uh, how's it going, dude? Uh, I'm pretty sure you commented on like old check me Lincolnites and like gods and generals video and like way back in the day. So it's, it's nice to see you. I'm pretty sure I banned you from my channel a long time ago. I'm, I'm, you know, it's probably going to make you angry, but you, if I did that, you've definitely said something like bigoted. Um, so, you know. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, but you said the Civil War was not about slavery. Um, uh, dude, it totally was. Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing, man. Slaves, the... the, the I, I wouldn't the fall whole, for their trap. The whole 19th century, the whole first half of the 19th century in American history, the main political struggle was based off of the tensions between free states and slave states. Right. And like there were a lot of political differences that they had. Right. Like how much power should state government had states rights. Right. Or should there be um, a more protectionist economy or a more free trade economy? You know what I mean? Like there's there was. There were political issues, some of which you may, you know, take the sort of slave state side on in retrospect. You know, I know, uh, Matt, you're a big uh, free trade guy. Um um, and I am too, in a lot of circumstances. Um, but, uh, there's the, you know, there's like not everything that the slave states, uh, were advocating for was like entirely unspeakable and evil. Right. Right. But, but it kind of all kind of came back to their, the upper class and the aristocracy of the South and their political power. And what that was based on was their domination of black Americans and their specifically their enslavement of black Americans. Right. So cotton gin, you know, okay. So I mean, it's founding, founding fathers, their whole generation, it's widely understood even among slaveholders like George Washington, like Thomas Jefferson, yeah. it's widely understood. Slavery is wrong and it is on the way out and we should end it as soon as is practically possible. Widely understood among that whole generation. 
then the cotton gin gets invented, right? And it's a bit of a game changer. All of a sudden, slavery is insanely profitable. And it's mm-hmm. making these Southern aristocrats a ton of money. And they just quite can't get those dollar signs out of their eyes. And they start to rationalize it. They start to say, you know what? The Bible. The Bible. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but also, those the founding fathers, they were wrong. They said that the natural state of humanity was that all men were created equal. That is not true. The white man is superior to the black man. And slavery is the black man's natural and moral condition. And they are not equal to us. And that is the great truth upon which our society is founded, the cornerstone of our society, if you will. Mm. And so this becomes so ingrained in the specifically the upper class Southern white point of view that when there start to be serious rumblings in the Northern states about the moral qualms about slavery and to be fair to your perspective, you know, international, like um, um, the, the economic domination by the much more populous and industrialized North, you know, right? Like that was a part of it for sure. It wasn't just all like, oh, these Northerners, they're so morally, you know, oh my God, they're just like, oh, they're the best. They, 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 you know, they always buy the oat milk. No, the Northerners, they, a lot of it was economic power for them too. However, there was a very strong streak in the Northern states about mm-hmm who said correctly, as I'm sure you would probably agree as a 21st century person and not a huge racist, that uh, that slavery was inherently wrong, right? And, and this started to gain real traction in the North to the point where this, this party, this new political party, the Republican Party got formed, with, with, which had a very explicitly uh, anti-slavery platform that basically said, dude, Slavery, it's it's on the way out. It is going away. Like the, the British, mm-hmm. they are way ahead of it. Like all the other major, like, you know, civilized nations, they have abolished slavery. America's got to as well. It's only a matter of time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to restrict slavery to just the states where now it currently exists, and we're going to let it die out, right? So that was the whole, the Republican Party's whole thing. Now, you take a look at the Missouri Compromise, all these compromises throughout all of American history about the economic power between the aris- the slaveholding aristocracy of the North and the industrial robber barons of, uh, or uh, the slaveholding aristocracy of the South and the industrial robber barons of the North, right? So they, uh, the big part of it was like, okay, so where is there going to be free states? Where is there going to be slave states? And as America expanded to the West, where's the line going to be? Like, what, what you know, what's going to be the law in these new states concerning slavery? And for every free state that was admitted and and for every free territory that was admitted, these Southern aristocrats lost an enormous amount of political and economic power. And ultimately it came to the point, right? In 1860, Abraham Lincoln gets elected and Abraham Lincoln is saying, I want to make the territories free. I want to restrict slavery to the territories where it currently exists. I'm not gonna abolish slavery. I'm not going to infringe on slaveholders constitutionally guaranteed property rights, but I am not going to ex- to tolerate the expansion of it. And to the slaveholding aristocracy, this is apocalyptic, right? This is, we're done. And, and it's kind of like if you, you know, um, um, and I'm not sort of saying this is a negative example, I'm pro second amendment, but it's like when people were like, when wasn't it Trump who was like, we're going to get rid of the bump stocks. And then all of a sudden it was just like, Mm -hmm. they're coming for our guns. And it's like, well, no, they're coming for the bump stocks. Right. And it's, it's so, but it was taken in that way of like, Mm -hmm. this is, this is the beginning of the end. And it was very much the case with slavery in 1860. Right. It was like today he's saying that he's only going to keep slavery to the portions where it exists, but tomorrow who knows what he's going to do. And so this, these slave-owning aristocrats decided, you know what? We are going to tear the country in half rather than relinquish our political and economic power that is based on slavery. And yes, tariffs, states' rights, all this kind of stuff factored into it. 
but it was secondary to the institution of slavery, mm -hmm. which the people who orchestrated secession desperately wanted to preserve and expand. It's just really sad that you have to say, I mean, well, you said it really well, but I, goodness, can we, people, why are we even still having this conversation? Uh, okay. I think it's your turn to ask another question. I want to move on from this. I'm sorry. This guy. I'm so, no, 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 totally, totally. I hijacked the live stream for a second. Well, no, like I'm mad at him because like, I think he was just trolling you. And like, anyway, what's your next question for me? Okay. <laughs> Is it your turn? I mean, it's cool. You know, you know, yeah. I, um, it might be. It might be your turn. Um, oh. But How I many more you got? Well, I can ask you something. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, who was the sexiest president? <laughs> oh, that's related to one of mine. Uh, the sexiest president? That's an easy one. Um, it's Rutherford Hayes when he was young. Uh, <laughs> a yeah. lot of people say Franklin Pierce when he was young too. A lot of them, it's you know. We, we, a lot of these presidents, we think that um, we just visualize them when they're middle-aged or older, you know, like Martin Van Buren didn't have a photograph of him until he was much older, but as a younger man, he wasn't so bad, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, as far as like modern presidents, like, I, I don't even know if I want to go there, but I mean, I understand John F. Kennedy's appeal, like... Uh, I get it. Yeah, I totally yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, my question for you is what um, I don't think I've ever heard you make a video about this at all. But like, do you have favorite like your top three favorite presidents or worst three presidents? I know you don't like Johnson. I don't like Johnson. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Johnson, that is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, OK, three worst. Um, our three best. Uh, so I um, I don't know. I don't know if I have. If I have a three best or th a three worst, I mean, I, I really hate Andrew Jackson. Really? I really hate him. <laughs> I really despise him quite a bit, despite him being a bit of a hometown hero. Of course, he saved us from the British. I guess that's fine, you know. Um, but, you know, there's been more than once that I've thought, you know what I mean? If if they had won here uh, on the battlefield just down the road, uh, then maybe we would have, been, would have been a part of Canada. And at least I could, you know, go to the doctor. Um, uh, hey, I, all right, it's time for me to move. Okay. Hey. Buddy, hey. Oh, all right, it's, time, too. It's, okay. it's time to move to the bedroom. Uh, <laughs> But um, uh, so I'm I'm doing doing that. Jackson, uh, I will always defend. Hey, buddy! Um, I will always defend John Adams. Um, in fact, I think there's a video of in, time. Uh, in defense of John Adams. Um, uh, I do. Um, you know, I think Lincoln, though. I will say, speaking of Civil War stuff and, and presidents, I think Lincoln may be a little overrated. Uh, we agree on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, you know, I mean, it, yeah, again, it's just like if he hadn't been ha assassinated, if he hadn't been, uh, this is my kitchen, by the way. Just one of them. <laughs> I, I put in these uh, shelves myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, in. yes. Thanks. I do know light. I do know light. bringing in the light. Uh, um, so, uh, so, yeah, so I think that, uh, oh, God, I need my, uh, my rolly chair. Okay. Oh, thanks, Stephen. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, apologize everyone for the uh, for the disruption. <laughs> it's just it's, it's just time, time of the night out. where I need to. Uh, I, so I was um, telling Matt before we started before we started the live stream. I live in a, a shotgun type of house, which is a type of architecture here in New Orleans, where essentially, um, uh, like it's it's there's no real privacy, right? It's like all one. Like it, it, you can't, it's all one continuous house almost. Um, I love you. You don't have to explain shotguns. And uh, <laughs> I think I have to do people don't know. Um, and, uh, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's all one continuous house. So there's no, like the only places you can actually like close the door and be private are in our bedroom or in the bathroom. Like it's literally, it's just like, otherwise it's just an open house. But anyway, so my girlfriend came home and I didn't want to, uh, be kind of in her space. Um, I think she's going to watch some Ted Lasso and decompress. Um, uh, but, um, yeah. So anyway, Lincoln, I think, I think he's pretty overrated. You know, obviously he always makes the top, uh, he's always the top spot, the greatest president of all time. 
Um, I think that that certainly, I think if, if he didn't, uh, if he had, wasn't assassinated and if he didn't have to deal with the civil war, that would not be the case. Um, as much as I love Lincoln, you guys know, yeah, I love Lincoln. I do not have more cred as far as loving Lincoln is concerned, but I do think yeah. that he is vastly overrated. All right. Oh God. I left my, uh, I left my, uh, my questions in the other room, but that's okay. I can go grab them in a bit. Um, oh, Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, you, uh, go ahead and grab them and I'll put this up on the screen and then you can think about this maybe too. Um, cool. I'll be right back. Okay. So Jason again says, uh, we need, we need more folks making history videos. Yes, we do. Um, there are a bunch of long videos on YouTube arguing that Nazism and fascism are left-wing and or socialist. I mean, a bunch curious, are they right? What say you? I actually have a video about this. I made a video about fascism. And uh, in the video, I essentially argue that it's um, it's n you, like neither right or left left, but it definitely historically has found a, a, a bigger home uh, on the right. Um, but that doesn't mean it's uh, inherently on the right. Um, it's just authoritarian and authoritarianism um, conform or else type of uh, structure. Um, so I, I do, I have come across those videos. I know Prager U is guilty of many of those videos. Um, like it was actually, you know, the Nazis were the ones who were socialists because socialist was in the name and that's a fundamental, fundamental misunderstanding of history. And I, it's, I think they're being disingenuous. I think they really know the truth, but they're trying to make it seem that like, no, the real fascists are the communists. Yeah. Yeah. Question? Yeah. I I, I could not agree more. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I watched a, uh, I, I, I tried to give it the benefit of the doubt. Like that idea, like I honestly, like I saw a, people in chat, I'm sure are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. And I don't, like, I don't want to start YouTube drama here. I really don't. <laughs> we need it in the history YouTuber community though. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> it's never needed. But I watched a, a four hour video I honest to God watched a four hour video about that was arguing why the, why the Nazis were actually left wing. And I was like, okay, like oh, the channel, like from what I understood knew uh, their shit. And, um, and it was a four hour argument. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to give this a chance. It was thoroughly unconvincing. It was, it was lazy. It was bad. It was, it was not, it did not. I, I I went into it with a very open mind. Like I like at least I like to think that I did. Mm -hmm. And like, and yeah, I mean there is, and I do think that that Hitler like used. He utilized certain kind of left wing ideas, right? So like it's not. Yeah. Like, there is a reason well, why I'm it is the National too. Socialist Party. Like it was. It like the whole thing was like we are, we're, we're gonna fight back against the elites, right? It's like, yeah. it isn't in terms of like your class doesn't matter. It's just your blood, right? It's just your, your German-ness and, 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 you know, and, and we shouldn't have this divide between the rich and the poor. It's, it's just the Aryans should stick together, right? Populist rhetoric. Yeah, sure, sure. And that's like, and you could, from a certain perspective say like, yeah, I mean, that is like a little bit left-wing and you could maybe call that socialist, but I, yeah, I mean, and I'm not like a World War II guy. Like I, I know quite a bit about it, like any history nerd does, but it's not like um, uh, like overall World War II is not my area of expertise, only kind of certain little areas of it. And that, and I still found it like very unconvincing. And, um, uh, and yeah, it, it is just a profound misunderstanding of like what national socialism actually means. Um, yeah, it's, it is, it is very, very unfortunate that that's, Sort of around. I mean, it's the same thing as like the uh, the Democrat, um, you know, the Democrats supported slavery, and now the Democrats are trying to tear down all their statues. It's like, what are you talking? Kind of rewrite yeah, history it's... for your political agenda. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's kind of classic Prager you, right? I mean, it is. I mean, you know, and I, I referenced it earlier, but you know, it's very Succession. It's very ATN. It's very Roy family. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dante again. He's very generous. Uh, Twelve oh. Angry Men. Uh, yeah. Amazing movie. It's Amazing pretty much one of my movie. top favorite movies of all time. I, oh I, my God, it's so good. And what's crazy is that I sh 
show it to high schoolers and they still like it. At first, they're just like grumbling. And then by the end of it, they're just yeah. like glued. Yeah, it holds up. It, it 100% holds up. Yeah. Such All a right. Good, yeah. You got, you have two more for me or one more? I have one more for you. Um, almost... I have, <laughs> I, ha I have two more. I have two more. Would you like well, me to go? Do you want to? Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. We'll get more okay. organized here by, by the time. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, you have a passion for music. You have yeah, a band. Yeah. Um, do you find it difficult to make time for your passion for music? Because, you know, you're, you're a dad. So you got you, between fatherhood, between teaching, between YouTube. I mean, you have so many balls in the air all the time. Is it difficult to, like, get the band together for, like, practice and, and to record and stuff? Yeah, it's really sad because I would say we were most active between the years of like 2005 and uh, 2010, like those five years, like that's when we recorded the most. And when I say we, it was mostly me, like uh, my brother uh, helps out, but it's, and so, um, you know, all the president songs was just me. Like um, he, he, he'll play them live with me when we played shows, but our shows really went down, especially when I moved back to Kansas. When I lived in Nebraska for a while, Omaha, yeah. um, and the music scene up there is has always been great, like the last thirty years, anyway. And um, so I, I, it was really, I felt like it was a it was a special place to be in. For like, I never really our band was never really that popular. Like, I'd be happy if thirty people showed up to a show. Like, usually it was ten, um, but I would totally go on tour someday and I am trying to record like my girls are older now they're elementary school age and they they don't need as much attention as they used to so I am trying to record again like I used to I have all these songs that I've written that I've not recorded it's frustrating I have so many like clips on my phone that I like I record a little melody and like oh I'll record that whole thing later and I just haven't got around to it so mm -hmm. yeah yeah one of my long-term projects is to write a song for every single state and turn that into Ooh, an album. Nice. I was really inspired by Sufjan Stevens. I don't know if you heard of him. He's a songwriter. Oh, yeah, um, yeah he, he made a couple albums that were, uh, w one was based on Michigan. The other one was based on Illinois. And people thought he was going to do one for all 50 states. And then I was like, okay, maybe that's not like mathematically like <laughs> physically possible, but yeah. maybe someone could do a song for every state and kind of with the same. Um, also, his, I actually want them to be educational. Like, sure. yeah, yeah. I sure. feel like Sufjan Stevens' songs weren't, they were like alluding to the states, but not really. You could have yeah. sung those songs about any state. Yeah, anyway, yeah. my last question yeah. for you. Well, oh, no, yeah, I, well, I, well, just real quick, I, I know we want to get this quick. I know it's getting late, but like I do, I, I feel that very much. And I, and I guess I, I, you know, I don't have kids. Well, so yeah, with like, you, it's I, film, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's yeah. like, I mean, and I'm, I'm making a movie right now, um, the Sudbury devil, which I raised money for before COVID and that's been delayed and it's going to be like a two year delay, but it's uh. like, it's tough. It is tough to like get, like once you reach a certain age, you know, Again, Bo Burnham, you know, uh, I'm turning 30, I'm turning 30 in December. And uh, and yeah, it's just like people, they just, they're not, it's not like we're 23 anymore. It's not like we can get everybody together to do an artsy thing. You know, it's it's tough and it's sad. It is, it is, it is heartbreaking in a lot of ways. Uh, but at the same time, you know, people have their, uh, they, they've got, uh, you know, their lives and, and their but you're still making on. films, you're making short films and they have yeah no i mean i am but it's it's different you know it's it's like yeah. you know this this thing we've got planned this Sudbury devil thing it's it's an honest to god you know like it's 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 an honest to god it's you know made for 12 dollars in a roll of duct tape but everybody who is working on it is a con is a professional you know who does this yeah. thing, and it's like a legit thing so feature thing it, yeah. it is you know i mean it's it's i i get a lot of creative fulfillment from making videos and doing frozen fifties man and stuff, but it is like, there's another level, right? Yeah. Where it's just yeah. like, it's, it's, it's another level, but, um, you know, I wrote a screenplay. My brother and I wrote a screenplay oh, we cool. help it someday. Maybe you can help me make it someday. Sure. Yeah. 
We'll live till we're 100. It's all good. You just have time. <laughs> By the way, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. we're exactly 10 years apart almost. <laughs> we are, yeah. I'm approaching yeah. 40. You're approaching 30. Yeah, so yeah. I learned that about you. <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, yeah, what's question. your next question? Yeah, this is my last one. It's been fun. Um, well, this is actually kind of a, like, not a climatic question. <laughs> oh, well. Um, but I guess, like, you know, um, when you get recognized, I, I, I saw in another video that you said you get recognized sometimes. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, what what did they tell you is the video that, like, stands out that they really loved? Is, is it always the... Civil War stuff, or do you ever get people that like, say they like, they recognize you for something else and appreciate something else? Um, you know, uh, it's interesting. I, you know, it's it's not even, people don't even necessarily talk about like specific videos. Um, <laughs> They're just amazed they saw somebody they recognize, right? Well, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's weird. I, I, I do get recognized like quite a bit and actually, you know, and here's a sort of, you know, this isn't like, uh, uh, I don't know, this is just a sign of my own like insecurities and my ego, but there was sort of a point where, uh, where like, uh, you know, maybe like last year when my, my channel like started blowing up big time and it was even like during COVID, you know, I would like go out and I feel like I would get recognized a lot. And then I stopped getting recognized for a while. And I was just like, what the hell? Why are people making this <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just like narcissism, you know, it's just stupid, selfish, you know, self-centeredness. But uh, um, but no, I mean, it, it pretty much like um, but it does. I also just like don't really go many places. I'm, I'm pretty quite introverted. But uh, um, but I do like we just had our par first parade here in New Orleans for the first time in like 18 months. Um, and yeah. I got recognized like four times. Um, and uh and yeah, I feel like whenever I go out to like a big event with like a huge crowd with like a lot of people, I almost always get recognized usually more than once. And usually it's just kind of like, it, it kind of depends where it is. Like if it's here in New Orleans, it's almost always like New Orleans related, right? Because I have so many yeah. New Orleans history videos. And I it's love New like, Orleans stuff. Like, I feel like you're- There, the there will be more where that came from for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of it is New Orleans related, but- uh, um, it was interesting. I was in uh, a small town in Michigan where my in-laws live. And I went to a um, uh, sort of a, a like sports equipment store because I was getting some uh, some hiking equipment for a big uh, Appalachian trail hike I was doing. Um, and one of the guys who worked there recognized me and stuff. And I was really awkward. And it was just an awkward interaction. <laughs> and I was like, not very, I was like, oh, huh. yeah, I was just like not prepared for it. And I like smelled bad, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just like hadn't showered in like three days because quarantine or whatever. And it was, I don't know. That was awkward. But uh, but yeah, it was interesting. It was more just kind of like a there is kind of this interesting where thing where people come up to you and they're like, oh, you know, I'm not you on YouTube, you know, I really like your stuff. I'm a fan. And it's like, okay, great, great, great. And then there's kind of like a well, see nice you later. to see ya, you know, it's yeah. sort of where you kind of there's this interesting too. sort of moment of like okay, you know me from, cause I'm the guy on your computer, but now we have to interact as two human beings, you know? Uh, yeah. I do think it's interesting. Uh, the, um, I, I have a large, I've noticed that my girlfriend incessantly makes fun of me for this, but there's a large <laughs> concentration of like sallow 20 year old white men. <laughs> this is like all of my fans who recognize me are all like pale, thin, uh, one of your old yeah. white dudes. <laughs> it's yeah. just like you love the the nerdy zoomer white man. Uh, uh, but it, well, well, I mean, I, tell me about your thing. your fans. Uh, uh, well, it hasn't happened for a while either. But I think I I live in a city that's uh, you know it's it's a hundred thousand people, so it's not that big in Kansas, and uh, so a lot of I think I do most of the people that I've run into. Yeah, it's locally. Cause they yeah. kind of know, like they kind of look out for me anyway. And um, sometimes I even film out on the street too, like you do. So sure, that helps. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you and I have that in common that we, uh, we kind of put ourselves out there and we're always on camera, almost always on camera for me. Um, yeah. Not everybody does that. Of course. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, they're, they're not, <laughs> which might be the better way to do it. <laughs> well, I've never, 
It's usually, yeah, it's usually young, young men. Uh, although I, one time a couple came up to me and that was interesting. And then like, I noticed, yeah, that awkward thing that you mentioned is that's so true. And I try to ask them questions and like, they don't know, like, wait, I'm, I don't, you want to know about me? And I'm yeah, always, yeah. cause I'm always well, curious. I especially want to know, like, well, how did yeah. you find out about me? You know, like what the heck, yeah. you know? Well, that's one thing. I mean, my, yeah, I mean, my, and I feel like the first couple of times I got recognized, uh, yeah, I mean, my girlfriend was like there, right. And, and she just sort of like said, like, you need to like ask these people questions about themselves or else it's going to be really awkward, you know? And she yeah. would tell me like, ask them their name and anyway. stuff. And now I'm always like, oh, what's your name, dude? You know? And, and I always try to ask them about themselves, um, which I hope they appreciate, you know, and I try to be like nice and stuff. And I do like, it is like, genuinely like very flattering you know what i mean it's it's genuinely well, and i want to these people like, are most of the time, it like makes my day you know it's just like oh my god if they like, watch us just, they are cool. nice you know yeah like all the people still watching right now like these are people i would literally want to hang out with and just talk like all the people i've met in real life that are patreon supporters i could talk to them for days straight oh yeah and that, also yeah. like well because it's not because, got the like, same interests you know yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not because like, oh, I love you. They don't talk like that. They just talk about like stuff that we care about. Usually yeah, it's totally. political st politics always comes up because I'm a mostly political history. But yeah, of course, of course, of course. Well, and, and I think, oh, my my battery, my light went out. Um, well, and I think it's also I mean, a lot of the stuff that I do is like, which I kind of I, I feel like I fought against it for a long time. Cause I, I sort of went into doing YouTube with this idea that history didn't have to be political. And I feel like I've kind of come around to the idea that like, yeah, it totally is. Um, but I do like, you know, and I do think that like when it, it, it comes up a lot with me too, with like people just talking to me on social media or in real life, you know? And, um, and I think it's like not, uh, you know, when people talk to me and, and I think it's pretty safe to say, that somebody sees my videos and if they just like say like Donald Trump, right? That guy's a freaking like hate that guy. Like I think it's pretty safe to say that I'll be like, yeah, don't like him. You know, it's not, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. But I do think that I I sometimes am like a little bit mischaracterized, you know, um mm -hmm. like uh politically. I you definitely, know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of your stuff is like more explicitly political than than mine is, you know, and and uh and yeah, I, I definitely feel like it's it's sort of, you know, yeah, it's sort of the the, the left wing boogeyman type of thing. And people have been saying it on on my uh, uh, in the chat about like bread tube and stuff. As I get kind of lumped into bread tube, uh, which it's I so weird that you get lumped into that. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't know. Like I love contrapoints, and like I watch some like bread tube people, but like yeah. I don't want any. Like no, like I'm not. Like no disrespect, but like I'm not. I, I would totally like listen. If ContraPoints emailed me and said, like, let's collab, let's move in together, you know, <laughs> you and me, you know, we're, we're going to take over the world together. I'd be like, yes, absolutely. You know, uh, no, of course, uh, I, I, you know, actually, my girlfriend is also named Natalie. So so ContraPoints is my second favorite, Natalie. Um, but uh, but no, but I love ContraPoints more than life itself. But like it's but that's not something I want to be like necessarily associated with you know um yeah uh, and, and it's because it doesn't represent my beliefs like i'm not you know i am not a twitter you know that's not me right uh, and and uh but anyway um yeah so it is interesting how like that sort of does seem to kind of come up and 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 uh and and people sort of make assumptions and sometimes they're right but sometimes they're like really way off base yeah you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. And I did, I started, I did a lot of uh, collaborations with uh, with uh, Carl from the In Range TV channel. Uh, oh, yeah. He does a lot of firearms history stuff. And I think that kind of threw people for a loop as well, where it was like this guy, I've like kind of pegged him as like super left wing. And yet he's like doing collaborations with the gun channel. But like Carl is just like just a super cool guy. And I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's, it's all kind of politicized to a weird degree. Um, uh, yeah. and yeah, in 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 a way that's sort of, uh, but I do, um, I'm sorry, I'm rambling again, but I do think that it's like, it is history can be like inherently political. Right. But it doesn't necessarily, but it's all too easy to just sort of peg people into a specific genre or a specific political movement. And, and, uh, that isn't always the case.
You know, in fact, in fact, I think most people you talk to in the street, they're not going to be like, oh, well, I am like strongly on this side. It's like that's most my political people, spectrum video. That's yeah. like it, you have to do it by issue, not like. Yeah, exactly. Oh, by oh. issue. Exactly. It's it's uh, yeah, it's it's a different kind of thing. But I'm sorry. I, I feel like such a dick. I've been rambling about like, oh, people don't like me. And, and it's probably. No, this is great. But, and this person was nice. Thank you, Fort Knox Movies. Your, your username makes me want to check out your channel. I don't know if you actually, anyway, uh, thank, I wanted to thank you both for educating me and restoring my faith in humanity. Well, you all get restored my faith in humanity as well. Thank you. Uh, I have one more question for you. That's right. You do. Okay. I, so do, I, do. I know I can tell that you're getting tired and you're flagging. And I usually go to bed at 10 30, son. <laughs> <laughs> this is late for me. <laughs> I well, thank you so much for staying and, and for putting up with me and my craziness. No, this has been a lot of fun, obviously. Yeah, I've I've had a blast. I've had a blast. But I have uh, I have one more question for you, and it's and it's it is suitably climactic. In fact, I think it is the the question that uh oh. everyone wonders when they when they watch a Mr. Beat video, which is uh how often do you go to the gym? What is your gym routine? Um, you you present yourself as this mild mannered educational YouTuber, and yet uh, whenever your body comes into frame, it becomes very apparent that you are a sex god. And uh, yeah, so so what's your routine? Uh, I guess I should have seen that coming. Um, I actually. You know, like when I was in high school, I played soccer and tennis. It wasn't like, you know, football or anything like that or wrestling where I had to like, you know, lift weights to prepare. I, it's just something I always got into like as a stress reliever and through college. And people are like this past year, people were like, oh, during the pandemic, Mr. B, the, you know, he, he worked out a lot or whatever. But I've I've always worked out. You can ask. Mrs. Beat, I it's just something I I literally can't go a week without going at least a couple times because like you get those endorphins and all that, you know. Yeah. And I'm not big on cardio, like I don't run much. Uh, I walk every day, but uh, so that's my way to get my heart rate up. And I've literally, yeah, like it's funny that people just all of a sudden because they saw me in a short sleeve shirt for the first time, they're like, <laughs> "Oh, you've been working out, like." <laughs> And it's funny, too, because like I think a lot we have this stereotype of like, um, you know, on Instagram or wherever we're like, bro, I just got done with a good workout. And they're like flexing in the mirror and take taking selfies. And I yeah, yeah, I'm not one to do that. And I'm, I'm that's I would feel really awkward if I did that. So but maybe the next issue of uh, history, YouTuber magazine, I'll try to go for the centerfold. Uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's what the people want, right, people? Um, uh, yeah. uh, no, no, for sure. I mean, I, well, it's interesting because I'm like not, uh, I, I'm just not a, uh, I just don't exercise. I don't know. I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> Main um, thing is get your heart rate up. Like, Well, you know what? And and this is like, this is kind of personal, but I, but I don't care. I'm trying to be more open and and uh, cause I, I don't know, I think live streams are more interesting to know when they're, when they're a little more personal, this is nothing really bad, but <laughs> I, for, for a while during COVID, like during the pandemic, I was like, right. So like when the channel, when my channel blew up, it was like very early in the pandemic. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to be on camera a lot. Like I should like take care of my physical appearance, right. I should like work out. And I worked out and I, I just at home, you know, I didn't like, it was still, you know, Sort of deep quarantines, but I was like doing a lot of push-ups and a lot of triceps, and I was like um, uh, sit-ups, and I was like trying to like just become just like hotter, right? Just like more attractive on camera. Like it's it's shitty and and uh, narcissistic and 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 vain, but it's true. It was like, well, I'm like sort of a internet personality now, so I need to like look sexy. Um, and then like three or four months into just me working out all the time. I made a video and it was like the the uh, height of summer in New Orleans and I was shooting outside and I wore like a sleeveless t-shirt and I thought I looked really good. Like I thought my arms looked great and like buff and stuff. And there were so many comments that were just like, 
dude, like eat a cheeseburger, like do some push-ups, like you skinny bastard, just like giving me shit for being so skinny. Uh, and it, it legitimately hurt my feelings. Like, and, and it like discouraged me from working out. I was just like, that's, that's like, that was three months of work. Wow. And, and these people like legitimately hurt my feelings. Um, yeah, no, I just, and it, I and it, it. it was awful. And I just like, and I was oh. like, all right, well then I just won't exercise. Uh, it, yeah, it was, it was, it was really heartbreaking. I was not a fan. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, but they think it's okay. Like for some reason, our society, it's okay to make fun of, uh, people who are not larger, but it's, it's, it's taboo to make fun of people who are, are larger, but if you're skinny, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't have it too bad cause I'm tall. I feel like it's not like, I'm not like a Timothy Chalamet, you know, I've got, I, I'm, I am quite, quite tall. So I don't think I have it as bad as a lot of people, but yeah, no, it is true. I mean, it is like, you know, whenever I wear something that isn't a lot of clothes, it's like, wow, what a skinny dude. <laughs> and it's like, ah, damn. Uh, but you know, it's whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it comes with the territory, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's just a part of like appearing on camera, but, uh, it is funny cause my, this is uh, an interesting uh, part of uh, an exciting part of being in a, in a, um, uh, of modern, uh, life. Uh, you know, I'm in, in my relationship, I'm the artsy one who's skinny and doesn't work out. And my girlfriend is a huge bro. Like my girlfriend <laughs> goes to the gym like three times a week and she just you like, she's just a bro. And, uh, and, and she's always doing her like presses and stuff and she goes running and stuff and she's super disciplined. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, <laughs> it was really hilarious. Cause like, um, uh, a couple weeks ago we were out at dinner and, uh, and she's just like better at ordering food than I am. Cause she worked in like hospitality for a long time. And it's just like very like adept at like speaking that language and can like order food really well. And, uh, and she ordered, uh, she like ordered us dinner at this restaurant we were at and she was just like, okay, so I'll have blah, blah, blah. And he'll have blah, 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 blah. And like ordered it. And it was like all very efficient and very good. And it was like, you know, and I probably would have been like, Hey, how are you? And just made it weird and not been as efficient about it. Um, but it just kind of struck me when she did it. I was just like, you sound like frozen fifties, man. They're just like, <laughs> Yeah, I'll have the steak and uh, the the dame. She'll have uh, you know, she'll have the salad, you know. And I uh, got a beer for me, a white wine for her. You know, just, <laughs> yeah. I just made fun of her the whole night. I was just like, "Who are you, Dick Jet?" You know, just like ordering for the lady at the table. You know. Um, yeah. No. No, uh, she is not. She she's not super muscular, but she is she is uh, fit. Uh. If if there is a god, then she give out to Shay a muscular woman. Um, yeah, she's not super, super muscular, but she does work out and she's fucking strong. You know, not as strong as me, <laughs> but she is strong. Language. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> now that he's I know it's really late. Well, maybe we should wrap this up, Matt. I could I could talk for legitimately <laughs> it's already another hour. Uh, I'm having a bunch of fun, but um, yeah, no, this has been. I said this to JJ. I'll say it to you. It's been a great excuse just to have a great conversation and hang out and thank you for sharing your uh, Thursday night with me and uh, the, the, the audience as well. Um, all of you, I I'm, I'm sorry if I missed your super chats as always. Um, a lot of you had really kind things to say about both of us. So thank you <laughs> for being, you know, we, our negativity, negativity bias is always way too much. We should really pay attention more to the yeah. positive comments like this one. <laughs> um. oh that's awesome yeah no i um, i do as well i do as well i have some uh some wine right here that i've been i've been working on um <laughs> no th this has been this has been a lot of fun i read matt i i'm i'm so thankful that you stayed up so late and and i'm sorry <laughs> i didn't mean to keep you um yeah i'm trying to like so i'm trying to like live stream more and i'm trying to be a little less of like uh a little less anal about uh I don't know. I'm trying to be, I guess, be like do more live streams and be kind of more open and and trying to sort of make a bit of a, more of a conversation with like my viewers and stuff. Um, because I kind of feel like I sometimes am I don't know. I I, I am uh, not as sort of connected to my incredibly supportive audience as I as I should be. Uh so this has been this has been great. And it's been great to like hear everybody's see everybody's comments and the super chats, obviously, like 
have been incredibly generous uh, to Matt and everything. And and yeah, it's just been like awesome getting to know you more, Matt. And I, I hope I wasn't too much of a spaz. Uh, it's just who I am, you know. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> uh, just real quick. Uh, I've caught some of them um, and usually they're positive. So it works out. So, but I imagine not so much for you with <laughs> Oh, the other people's reactions. I don't know. I, I've, I've, I've seen a couple of them. Uh, there's some people out there who do not like me very much. Um, I'm not really interested in YouTube drama um, because like what's in it for me, I guess. Like, again, this is my job. And like, yeah, yeah I don't like, know. It's a lot kind of times of, they just want attention. And yeah. You know. And it's sort of like, why would I, I mean, I, I've had a lot of people like try to be like, Hey, like debate me, bro, or whatever. And it's like, okay. Um, my, my speaking fee is 10 grand for a night, you know? Um, I don't know. It's like, it, it's like, what do I, what do I possibly have to have to gain from it? But, um, well, yeah, like that's what Steven Crowder said. He's like, why would I debate Sam Cedar? Did you hear about that drama? But well, Sam Cedar, as, as you know, out, as you know, Steven Crowder is one of my heroes. So, uh, <laughs> Sam Cedar has a million subscribers, but he's like, why would I go beneath my level? <laughs> uh no no i mean it's but it but it is it is kind of like what what would i possibly have to gain from from that i don't know i don't know i get uh, it. I, I, I have seen a couple of reaction videos i don't it's not my preferred style of format so i guess i honestly don't like watch a whole bunch of them um yeah i think there's some people out there who like really like me and who get it and other people who like don't uh but that's okay it's you know i can't control what other people think of me and and people should fucking well, criticize me why not i think you know? i should yeah I'm not, I'm not God. I don't know everything about everything. You know, I'm, I'm we just probably disagree uh, on some stuff too. We just, yeah, exactly. I like guess it's, it's whatever. whatever. Capitalism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being here. Um, anyway, thank yeah. you. Check out, uh, Atun Shea films. Uh, most of you already, uh, are probably subscribed. There's a lot of overlap, but some of you have not. So it's, he has really good stuff. So please check it out. And James Madison Williams has one last suggestion, meta comments and Captain Samuel Mosley. Uh, so, oh, yeah. God. Okay. So, right. yeah. Uh, Samuel Mosley, that guy sucks. Uh, <laughs> that guy sucks. Meta comment all the way. All right. Good night, everyone. I'm just going to.